Till midnight becomes dust Like it's New Year's Eve letting them guns bust I'm a few beers deep ready to bum rush Any of you suckers what, what When the sun's up Till midnight becomes dust Like it's New Year's Eve letting them guns bust I'm a few beers deep ready to bum rush Any of you suckers Lava unplugged Who came to see the show grab another program What's happening this ain't no rerun You got to understand I'm a grown man Gotta follow the plan Whole fam, don't wanna see me broke, damn I keep going, across the lowlands Fresh coast, trash a party like oceans Still smoking, met her in Wonderland In Northern Cali, we rally all through the underground Like can be so bland, you'd rather go glam A retro slow dancer to them old jams 
with your folk band Trying to hold hands, find me smoking a gram Pushing pebbles like soda cans We get down on your luck and you won't advance Like trying to go get gas and there's no more cash Crack a joke and laugh, add a splash of coke and jack This ain't about where you coming from This where my folks at when the sun's up Till midnight it comes dust Like it's New Year's Eve letting them guns bust I'm a few beers deep, ready to bum rush any of you suckers. What? What? Beware the warfare, the samurai swing. Captain Caveman, and hear the beats bang. The sumo slam, wham, the tomahawk chop. A billion of one MCs to rap. And if it's all beef over hip hop, then my premonition in this and it just stop. Though I can't kick rocks, I gotta keep going. Seeking me blow will shock your emotion. Free flowing to show my guy juice, knocking the nail in your coffin and your pine box loose. Divine thoughts combined as the rhymes right truth to ya And I'm off the mind fool cause I got proof for ya Moving up when I look down my shoes are stuck The sooner I choose the lust I must refuse the bus Do I thrust to tango and major take two of us Say say Frank was the rage in the frame Be careful who you trust Using all my energy when I be doing stuff Screaming fuck the system when they're missing too corrupt Big Frank dog creeping out the cut They bleeping out my cussing and they peeping out I crush Kill, destroy, competition in the clutch You wishing that it wasn't what it is, but it is such Such a hassle when I wrestle Castle made of sand, watch these rappers all plateau Flow master fat sack, go way beyond this place And return to see the grass go remember me In your mind's eye lies infinity I was sent to be the realest rapper of the century Blowing off steam, you couldn't do the work like entropy Why celebrities wanna even try to step to these Brian Dennehy Really ain't no kind of friend of me I'm a legend G, wait eventually get empty when the sun's up Till midnight it comes dust Like it's New Year's Eve, letting them guns bust I'm a few beers deep, ready to bum rush any of you suckers What? What? When the sun's up, till midnight it comes dust Like it's New Year's Eve, letting them guns bust I'm a few beers deep, ready to bum rush any of you suckers Lava unplugged, spark this shit and light in the time of darkness Marvelous, we getting lit like the arsonist Part of this artist just striving hard to carve a switch When you put your heart in this, look now how it all begins like the genesis Through ancient history as remembrance This pestilence spreads across the land Answers are heaven sent, represent We need everybody, that's a definite, it's a prerequisite For you could even connect with us There's Aryans, aliens, and Americans And ain't none of them ever figured out how to wear their skin I guess it's all just a matter of who we are and where we've been I was married with kids, you could see me rolling just like Larry Flint That's a man in my pockets are very thin Lonely pair of Tims in the hill with a hairy chin Humanitarian, no not the type to cherry pick This galaxy's perilous, so, so I'm prepared to dip When the sun's up, till midnight it comes dust Like it's New Year's Eve, letting them guns bust I'm a few beers deep, ready to bum rush Any of you sucks, what, what? When the sun's up, till midnight it comes dust Like it's New Year's Eve, letting them guns bust I'm a few beers deep Ready to bum rush any of you suckers Lava unplug Hello, what is good everyone? What is good this, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess Sunday evening, KTS, what is, because uh, we have been going, you may be wondering, like, yeah, KTS has been going slightly later, and the reason it's been going slightly later now is just because of daylight savings, it'll be back to usual soon enough, within like a few weeks, it's just at the end of the month and daylight savings goes back for the rest of Europe, so if you're wondering, Tyrone, why you keep calling this 2.15 Eastern Standard Time? Well, it's just because of time, <laughs> I, I am uncertain what it keeps changing to, but you know, the usual time that everyone is familiar with will return after this month. But, you know, it's just a daylight saving thing. So that is the main reason. Nice. what is up? Yes! I don't know. Great. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we're going to have a lower viewership than normal because we are Who knows? Who we're knows? Because we are, we are, we are, we are, Nice. Okay, let me tell you this, right? What, me, you know, who knows about what fucking other inferior shows are on the internet? KDS is always the best place to be on a Sunday night. That's what I'm fucking telling you. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter what putrid people's hairlines recess backwards. The KTS has everything for someone, for all the family, I guess you could say. So, on, on search for that, I guess, actually, no, I was not the fucking intended to be the first thing. self immobilization right here. Um... Um, Poser says, why, oh, okay, let's do this. What is up, AV? What's up, Mysterious K? What's up, Nafe Backwards? What's up, I Have No Son? Um, Tyrant's audience is loyal, though. It is for some reason. People still watch me from and through, but why do people say I'm bold? You're not technically bold, you just have an incredibly receding hairline for your age, Poser. I would suggest 
you five hour product is inhibited. And I have, you know, we, <laughs> you are probably going to hear me talking about not only autoimmunity, but uh, five hour product is inhibited within this podcast, I guess you call it. Is KTS technically a podcast? Would you consider it a podcast new? It's very much a podcast, I'd say. Oh, I'd yeah. say it, sometimes it's a podcast that's hard to just listen to, though, because sometimes we we will show like images and stuff. Yeah, you know, sometimes you know, sometimes you gotta see Ronnie McNutt blow his brains out. You know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes you gotta see. Exactly. So, and Spondo comes <laughs> into the chat. My hairline's not even that bad. Well, he oh, he tried to dispute the Vertex crown shedding because he went to the barber and he was like, "No, your hair is fine." Probably to get him keep coming back to the barber every week. Until he notices a more receding line. But, um, yeah, from what I recall of just seeing Spondo's hair, it's like he tried to convince me that it wasn't receding, and he didn't actually have vertex ground shedding because that was just something he said. It, the sides are slightly receding, and he is going through the first process of the Hamilton or Wedding scale. Um, so, you know. Maybe it's not going to occur as fast because it's not a Nording 3.5. But let's, but let's, you know, let's, uh, you know, I digress the technical details. What do you think of this? What Amount of lore. Basketball meme that Poser has sent me. <laughs> Amount of lore, autistic fan base. What do you think about this? Alright. Uh. <laughs> Warhammer's right up there. That's not surprising. <laughs> okay. And what I, I was talking I think they're doing. I don't know. Does Pokemon really have that much lore? I guess it does. Yes. But... Yes, it does. I and I'm a big Pokemon guy. Um, but something that isn't up here that I think it should be is Smash Bros. And I think ultimately, the problem with the Smash Bros. community, what it is, is the problem with the people inside of there. Because technically, Smash Bros., while being completely grassroots, it inadvertently ended up being the most technical and advanced fighting game of all time, and realistically the most advanced esport game to play at a competitive level at the top range. So you just can't have a bunch of people that are putting so much time in every single day that are getting actually nothing out of it because they can't sponsor the game because Nintendo won't sponsor it in a grassroots scene without just the people being completely hyper fixated on the game and not care about anything else. So of course you have some very strange mixes of having, oh you know I'm mid 30s, I'll let this 16 year old stay at my house for the day because we're both playing Smash Bros and there's nothing wrong with that. So you have instances like that which are you know pretty funny I guess. But overall, you see we you see this chart right here. Um, autistic fan base, Factorio right here. Uh, pretty funny. Um, yeah, I guess there is no lore for Factorio. I would disagree about Harry Potter. I think Harry Potter is going all the way to the left. I think that is more neurotypical than Call of Duty's, personally. Um, pretty into. And the also, why you think that, Tyrone, is because that's where all the autistic women go. <laughs> In... <laughs> no, 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 no. Niece. No. I know where the autistic women go. It's a game oh, yeah. series that I grew up with. The Harvest Moon series. The Harvest the Moon Harvest forums. Moon. Back in the day. Before there was Stardew Valley. Are they before... all Animal Crossing gamers now then? No. No niece. No. But there is no, no. no more Harvest Moon. <laughs> There isn't no more Harvest Moon, but for some reason, these same old, there is a few forums that are still active. There is like MLP forums that are still active. There's the PSL boards that haven't been taken down that are still active. There's the PUA boards, the bodybuilding forums that are still active. And another one is the Harvest Moon Games forums are still active to this day. For some reason, despite being there like Star Stardew Valley and almost definitive genres, there are still people that talk about Friends of Mineral Town to this day. Um on the fucking GBA and just have forums about it. There's at least people being in their 30s and 40s now just talking about fucking Harvest Moon all day. And it's not like Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town is, is particularly like a nuanced or deep game. It's very simple. Just people love that game. Um, <laughs> they should use the Tyrone logo to signify Smash Bros to reference the peak of the scene. Hell yeah. Um, I've had a same hairline for my entire life. Well, it doesn't matter the hairline, it matters the actual recession that is currently occurring. Like, recession can occur in the span of, you could actually be born with a receding hairline, and it doesn't mean it's going to stay a receding hairline. The only time you can tell a hairline is going to maintain itself is after the age of around 30. Because that's when, realistically, your DHT is kind of stabilized. So, I mean, what is actually taking away is because of um, resistance to the scalp. So you can be born with an actual, like, really bad receding hairline. And it doesn't mean anything, because your scalp could also be incredibly sensitive 
or oversensitive to THT or any other um, 5A alpha, uh, um, alpha enzymes. And it could just wither away. It could just be like, you know, just to, do you, just to do an existing Harvest Moon metaphor, it could be a crop you haven't watered for five days in a row. It withers away. That's, that's fucking Pose's hairline right now, withering away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this is something that I wanted to talk about. I don't normally talk about c ongoing current drama trends on the Birth Control channel. I mean, sometimes I do, but it's usually the drama of Maggot the Whore edits and People Riveter. It's not really Honestly, of... I saw it in the thumbnail, but I didn't think you were actually going to talk about it. No, I was going to talk about it because it is pretty funny because this guy's pretty pathetic. Um, because this guy, right, he's, um, Dark Vapor AU. Dark Vapor AIDS, as I've called him in the poll, because I'm pretty sure he has AIDS as well. He's got a receding hairline as well, but that's, that's the least of his problems, Nice. He's a guy who spends all day just arguing with people. He's an ex-speedrunner for GTA 5, and he knows all about the game, except realistically, he knows all about talking about what he calls DMCA, but what have I told you, um, News? And not only does he not understand how DMCA works, he's a false DMCA striker. And, um, well, yeah, he's pretty incompetent when it comes to actual overall law. Um, look at this, right? This is uh, a very funny clip. Reminded me that very recently I found out that Ethan has something like six different sound effects of me on his podcast. Not only that, he has used them frequently for over two years. That is just really fucked up. Divided by 14. <laughs> Such <a> pages. <laughs> so basically, the whole thing with Dark Viper is that he is impossible to be... Um, he is purposely verbose for no reason. So he does not understand DMCA or copyright law, and he cannot succinctly explain why he does not understand it. So he presents documents such as 14 pages. He presented a document of everyone who criticized him, and he included people such as Nerdy John. And in the citation, he said, like, Nerdy John, not much worth paying attention to here. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> shut up, Nerdy John. I guess, but that's what he put in the document. And I saw that. And I was like, "This is amazing." <laughs> this guy he has to respond to everything. He gets into debate chains of I bully bullies for like hours on end. Teen pages. That's right. Fourteen. <laughs> One of my favorite oh, no. people on the internet, Dark Viper. Fourteen pages. As someone who has been incessantly harassed by him for years in front of thousands, he is one of those truly deserving of being driven off the internet. I don't know how sick of an individual you have to be to do something like this. Like, if he was using it in some wholesome way or shouting. <laughs> this is like a Phineas yeah. moment right here. You cannot reference my name without me being supportive and you have to use this in a wholesome way. You can't make fun of someone on the internet. And he's just so upset that people are using this clip of him saying 14 pages. <laughs> this is retarded. Bring me out this, some guy, positive like, this guy does not know how to like deal with the idea of someone being critical of him. It's, it's not even so critical. It's just someone him. laughing at him. It's just like, uh, if they, they had to be using it in a wholesome manner, and I would have been right. fine with it. Fine, but he's just using it to mock me. But I did write a 14-page script <laughs> explaining it's a 14-page document. On page 14, <laughs> yeah. it's 14 pages 14 long. Pages. Why I spent 14 pages establishing. It's a 14-page meticulously written. It's 14 pages! <laughs> <laughs> 14 pages! <laughs> and he just can't cannot stand this. And you, you may be wondering, it's like how does actual copyright law work? Because let me refresh you a bit on Dark Viper AU, Dark Viper AIDS, or whatever we want to call this guy colloquially. There's a few things we can call him here. Because realistically, um, there's a, there's a few different things that, that are occurring here. But you have to realize that it's like, oh, um, with Dark Viper, it's, this is the guy who was, um, you know, Essentially, like, what he did to Judd Logic was that he struck down, like, an extreme where he was just reacting to it and making fun of him. And he just DMZA striked it. He refused to acknowledge it, refused to elaborate, and then it just like, claimed to be this, like, oracle, an agent on how fair use actually operated. And you may be wondering, it's like, okay, where does DMCA actually go? It leads to a court settlement. So how would someone, for example, Judd Logic's in the UK, Dark Viper AU is in, or AIDS, is in Australia, AIDS land, I guess the nanny state of Australia, 
So, um, how would it work in that kind of instance? Well, there is essentially with global copyright law something called minimum contacts that have to be made before like a court can have a pr pr um, personal jurisdiction over someone from another place. For example, like we actually look at in actual instances because the UK has something called fair dealings law, and it's pretty fucked, and it's so weighted in terms of the person who's actually accusing rather than the defendant itself, because that's how a lot of um, places are so corrupt, especially European. For example, um, Sargon Ricard did this thing where he placed his video on, for example, YouTube, an American company. So when he went through his lawsuit, which is essentially just a compilation and he won because he, the title was deemed as transformative, it was um, subject to a personal jurisdiction from an American court. However, if people are from the same country, they can be sued from that same country, even though YouTube is an American company. Like, for example, when Digi sued against Kavos and got Kavos's video taken down. If that made sense. Yeah. So, what is happening here is that, um, what would happen here was that they would have to kind of settle. The only way they could really settle globally is through an American court. There's no compromise any other way because of the minimum contacts that have to be made with DMCA. So, realistically, what this means is that Charles Roderick is completely protected by his criticism that he did to Dark Viper. And this is important because Dark Viper claims to be this knowledgeable guy, which is completely, unfortunately, misinformed. Um, but you know, you know, everywhere in Europe is completely upside down. I mean, this, I'm in, I know, Buff Jorah is reporting from France, where in France, everything is upside down. You know what I mean? Like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reverse of Floyd. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> now you can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> you picked the wrong neck, fool. Hey, 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 big smoke, big smoke, chill, chill. <laughs> 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 so let's see some of this actual video. So I went on Twitter today and I saw that someone was saying that Ethan Klein was going to be taking an indefinite hiatus from his H3H3 show or whatever. That to mean he's, uh, he's leaving and who knows for how long. Turned out just to be clickbait. Uh, he was just saying that he's going to be taking some time off because of the, I, I think, the birth of his, his, his child or something along those lines. This reminded me that very recently I found out- Because in this video, basically, Dark Viper AIDS is like very pro deplatforming, and he said like fucking Ethan Klein should be driven off the internet. And it just makes me want to like Ethan Klein more, which is a shame because I absolutely despise the guy. I think he's absolutely insufferable, I think he's dishonest, but he's better than this guy. And this is the thing that I feel like a lot of things on the internet have always just become. I hate this guy, but he's slightly better than this guy. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, there's so much I fucking... Let's that go through this. Ethan has... We're not gonna watch all of this. I'm not a fucking drama streamer. I'm a KTS streamer. I do my you own shit. watch like, like get AIDS, six man. different... <laughs> no, I've got a clips from it anyway. ...sound effects of me on his podcast. Not only that, he has used them frequently for over two years. So this is his issue. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> that is just really <laughs> fucked up. He's not using these in like a wholesome way. He's using them to mock me as a regular thing for years. Oh, I don't know how guy. sick of an so individual you have to be to do something like this. Like, if he was using it in some wholesome way or shouting me out in some positive way, fine. But he's just using it to mock me. As I said here, it's sad that Ethan Klein's announcement of taking an indefinite break from H3H3 was clickbait, as someone who has been incessantly harassed by- Okay, so actually watching this is pretty insufferable. I mean, anyone- I know confusing opinion for some reason who used to go like, I oh, this guy's great, I used to watch this guy when I'm fucking playing GTA 5. <laughs> Just listen to him ramble, and his, the Viper Rambles channel, it'll be like Dark Viper's take on politics and stuff like this, where he would be like pro-socialism and he was screaming at Hassan because Hassan wasn't a real socialist. And stuff like this. This is his takes on politics, like okay? I completely malinformed, just entirely emotional. If you thought this guy was not going to just make an emotional opinion the entire time. Um, which you were wrong. Okay, this is, uh, this video right here. This is, this is amazing. It'd be fun to talk to him. I'll be frank with you, I'm not exactly sure what we would be debating. Ethan seems to believe that it's not sick to find joy in other people's traumatic events. I don't think Ethan is a very good person, and his using a soundbite of one of the most traumatic, angry moments of my entire life- It's 14 pages! He's using a soundbite of one of the most traumatic, angry moments of my entire life. You hear that? Yeah. One of the most traumatic, angry moments in my entire life. Where are you getting the trauma from? <laughs>
he, because he's being made fun of. That's why. It's just like <laughs> someone who exists entirely in the emotional void. Like all he can do is one thing. And for some Why is reason, this guy's such a fucking baby, bro. It's no, it's so, so fucking it's bad. interesting because what you know, what on the internet is meant to be, it's the place where everyone comes together. It's the derivative melting pot. It's the mass, the thing that everyone falls together in. But for some reason, Dark Viper he um, participates in only a one-sided interaction. He will flag people, you know, um, he will flag people and he will interact. But he is completely dishonest. He just denies doing it. And when he was caught, he was like, "I, I didn't do that." Um, <laughs> it's so awful. For many, many years on his stream, perhaps a hundred times, is a bit more than excessive and very sick. Flashback. Fourteen-page Google document. He wrote a fourteen-page immaculate transcript, a manifesto. Wait, fourteen? It was fourteen pages document of against React Andy. You will never make something as funny as that compilation is to me. It sucks. I feel like I missed out on a really good meme. If I. Oh yeah, this is him like originally trying to say, oh yeah, it was originally really funny. And then like two years later, it's like, this is the most traumatic moment in my life. <laughs> Fourteen pages! <laughs> Fourteen pages! <laughs> I gotta play this fucking compilation again of the 14 pages. I did write a 14 page script explaining it's a 14 page document on page 14. It's 14 pages long, which is why I spent 14 pages establishing. It's a 14 page meticulously written, it's 14 pages! <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> 14 pages! No, it's like, how dare you, Tyrone? It's just because so many people have just talked about this, and when it was originally known, he would just claim, oh, it was a bit funny um, in, in, in the moment right here. This is um, something funny when um, Dark Viper Aids try to strike down Shadow Logic. This is pretty funny. Um, this was something uh, Shadow Logic posted out, where it was like, um, we note that the takedown correspondence between our client and YouTube with a contact to the first infringement work was subsequently used by Shadow Logic to create further offensive content, which include copies of the takedown correspondence and a reference to a client being a copyright abuser, which may give rise to an action of defamation. So essentially, um, Fucking Churchill got sent a war threat because he cues because he said that him DMCA striking him was calling him a copyright abuser, which is correct, right? That and is, he got sent this thing that looks like it's been written by ChatGPT, where it's like, I think calling him a copyright abuser is defamation. <laughs> I actually don't think this looks like it was written by co co uh, from uh, by ChatGPT. I think this is an actual lawyer trying its best to like actually do something. Maybe it was written by Dark Viper. Maybe he, there was fourteen pages of this, uh, but we can't see. Um, okay, let's go for this. But, um, there's a lot of instances of people, for example, trying to sue. And the first time I heard about the fair dealings law and the differences between fair use and fair dealings was when I Hate Everything was, um, being accused of being, you know, was trying to be, uh, was almost going to be facing lawsuit because he got free strikes immediately. And Derek Savage was threatening him with, like, taking him to court with the Cool Cat movie. And he was talking about how it was both, the, the criticism was both um, under fair dealings and fair use, even though fair dealings is so heavily weighed in the accuser. So he was protected on both parts, so it never actually went to fucking um, court. National Geographic proves teaching on Mr. Yakub. <laughs> Nation of Islam research group, okay, so not a biased source whatsoever. Okay. The prestigious National Geographic Society has reported that scientists studying DNA have now confirmed that Europeans as a people are younger than we thought, using unbiased, <laughs> using the unbiased measure of generic science that have point the same birth date for the European as the most honourable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Proof, Alan Cooper, director of the Australian Centre for Ancient DNA of the University of of Adelaide analyzed DNA from ancient skeletons and found out that genetic makeup of modern Europe was established just 6,500 years ago. Which is not true. Um, I don't want to do this thing where I have to explain what the last chance exertion is just to debunk this whole the Nation of Islam's narrative, but essentially it's just like the modern era of human beings, not black, not white, but just the evolution into Homo sapiens is around 42,000 years old. 
um, not fucking as many pages as um, Dark Viper, but it's getting close to it. And Alas Champ's exertion was essentially a small event for around 400 to 300 years, where the Earth was tilted slightly differently. So there was a certain brand of carbon, it's called Carbon-15 realistically, and some things are dated with Carbon-15 radiation. And it's the o oldest thing, there's for example Maori trees in New Zealand that are dated with this. To, to make it uh, known as like some of the oldest stuff in the world, and this is the evolution and essentially due to the atmospheric shift of the last champ's exertion 40,000 years ago, that is why the Homo sapien could even exist in the first place. So then you look at, okay, the different ethnic groups such as the Caucasian, the um, or if we are even going by, for example, the Caucasian, which is the Christoph Miner's term, where did they even come from? It's just like, like now, the modern Caucasoid is so different to just being white because realistically it came from like the Caucasus Mountains, which is in like kind of Russia, like Turkey, like um, Chechnya, like uh, Dagestan is in like the um, Caucasus Mountains, for example. And realistically, some people would not even call those people white people, but that's where those people came from, um, from an evolution of such. Um, just say Homo erectus, that's pretty funny. Um, but if you go through here, um, so I don't, I don't want to have to, you know, have to debunk this little by litter, but Dr. Jonathan Pitchard estimates that the point of where the genes for the Asian and European population were altered was 6,600 years ago, the exact date where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that Mr. Yakub began his Papos Island crafting process. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to, you know, I want to bring something up and just be able to laugh at the people who think Yakub is real, such as Elijah Muhammad, such as Malcolm X, such as um, Muhammad Ali, who believe in the reality of uh, Malcolm, uh, of uh, Dr. Uma. Oh, no, Dr. Yakub, rather, not Uma. Even though <laughs> he is <laughs> both a product of such. Even though there is that thing where like uh, Malcolm X went into like, certain parts of Egypt and asked people about Yakub, and he got kind of red pilled on Yakub. But that's beside the point. But let's just continue to read this. Professor Cooper's pinpointing of this particular date was 6,500, which is an arbitrary date, by the way. Um, Dr. Cooper said the genetics show that something happened around this point caused the genetic signatures of the previous populations to disappear. Um, to perhaps only 6,000 or 12,000 years ago. And what they say is they say the um, OCA, OCA2 gene, um, which is like, no, that's okay. So, okay, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of debunking, I guess, on the birth controller stream right here. So, what the um, OAC2 gene is, it's very common in people with um, albinoism. It's not really a thing that is affected. For example, it's something that affects the process of melanin. It's called a P protein, but realistically, there is other things before the OAC2 gene that are affected, more so the myosatin production, and why white people are even from, um, for even from the classes to begin with. It's because the ratio slightly very slightly to red and white blood cells, people who adapt to certain heat, it's people who are in those certain environments. And it's the myosatin um, gene, not the OAC2 gene, that's more so in um, albinoism. Um, and that's why, for example, there is, um, and the myosatin gene is the MS2N gene, but it's also why, for example, in certain just different um, ethnic groups, they are just um, muscles are like, they have different technically um, skeletal muscle like makeup. For example, it's just like why the most world strongest men are all from Scandinavia. It's because they hold more weight in terms of that. It's also why certain populations tend to be taller than others because of the certain environment that they had to adapt to to begin to. But it's also like, for example, it's like makes sense why a lot of marathon runners and people like this are from um, like uh, East Africa, uh, and a lot of it is just due to red and white blood cell production from myostatin. It's a very simple process. It's not from the OEC2 gene that had genetic makeup that did kind of change, because realistically there was people 
it's not just something to do with skin color. I mean, I think I think everyone understands that a different ethnicity just isn't someone you, you no one really looks like black people and white people. The difference isn't as superficial as just having a black and white skin. It's not like everyone's just like a you know if a fucking um. A, the confusing opinion painted his face completely black he would be able to like oh he he looks like an organic black person like no of course there is slight differences in other things and i thought this was something that was completely widely understood but because the nation of islam wants to kind of maintain this idea of yakub they just kind of have to do this entire thing until they kind of push this entire thing that um Oh yes, yeah, Yakub was actually the nation, the standardized version to Charles Darwin. I, and the, they, uh, their um, thresholds that they even pass through are a bit arbitrary and don't really make sense. However, this is the next story right here. I, I just wanted to see this because, yes, even now, in 2012, oh, rather in 2013, there are still people trying to actually convince people that Yakub is real. The black man with a giant forehead that threw a stick of dynamite at the Yakubian apes is a real guy. Neg. <laughs> Albino black, yeah. new and tasty. Hell oh, yeah. Wait, ain't Yakub just an anime character or something? That's what it was to. No, there's people who believe in Yakub. Um. Okay. Are you? Have you seen this? Infinite divided by bizarre changes to McDonald's uniform. I've not seen this. No. Okay. Essentially, I talked about a bit about McDonald's last stream because there was the whole um, anime push, I guess you could say. But um, this was pretty funny because essentially it's just like, um, instead of having their standardized uniforms, they're changing it to be more hip with the youth. There's just some weird McDonald's like marketing campaign to change the reputation just because of the meme of that the Mc McDonald's like application slip being sent to people <laughs> being sent to people like gross score when his fucking like channel completely bombed. It was like I don't know what I'm going to do, and it's like this is um it's like I think I found something for you, gross score, and it's like McDonald's application here or whatever because it's used in such a thing, and they now have like jeans, hats, joggers, and bandanas. They look like these are the new uniforms for McDonald's that you have to wear <laughs> can you imagine this like anyone who wears anything like this is now the minimum wage drip is this drip the minimum wage drip welcome to the sweatshop <laughs> instead of nwa i do you know what they're do you know what you're actually eating it's like insane in the brain <laughs> This is awful. Put a one in chat if you think this is drip. Put a two in chat if you think this is absolutely cancer. Um, this is great. Um, like you could choose any piece you want in a combination plastic from a genre and skirt. It's a huge improvement. Um, McDonald's uniform, but they have to be in these certain colors. These are the things you have to be the colors, and they have to be of certain areas. And they fuck with saying two. I have no sense saying two. Great. I'm I'm agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> Great, this is fucking dreadful. Um, this is fucking dreadful. What do you think of this news? It feels, I don't know, there's there's something about, it's that one, uh, well, what's the, what's the guy, it's like, uh, how do you do, fellow kids, what's the actor's name? Um, <laughs> what, Macaulay Culkin? Macaulay, that's Macaulay Culkin? Was it? I, do, I always assumed it was, because it just looked like... like... I thought it was the guy who played Green Goblin, I might be wrong. What, Willem Dafoe? Willem Dafoe, that's it. Is that Willem Dafoe? I always thought it was Macaulay Cole. I always thought the meme was like, it was Macaulay Culkin, like, addicted to fucking heroin, or whatever the fuck he was taking. I mean, I don't I'm think he was addicted sure to it. anymore. <laughs> it might be Macaulay Culkin. I don't fucking remember. Did um, I only remember Macaulay Culkin because of, like, Home Alone. That's the only thing I remember him for. I know he's, like, like fucked up now, but I don't know what he looks like. Wait, uh, apparently it was, uh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, was it fucking Steve Buscem Buscemi? Okay, never mind. I just thought it was Macaulay- The reason I thought it was Macaulay Culkin is because there was that Macaulay Culkin AVGN episode where he's wearing, like, the same outfit. And he's wearing- No, he's wearing the outfit and he has, like, the skateboard. And like, he did that because he was like, How do you do? I've coined up my act or whatever the fuck. And I thought he was referencing him being in that. And it was like, I guess he just isn't there. And he was just referencing that. It's like, I put my act together or whatever. Um... Okay, um, this is something pretty interesting. Do you know who this is? Bro, what the fuck? Yeah, it's fucking Airsoft Valley. 
Oh, that's fucking cool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused at first, and now I can see Yeah, it's cool. playing fucking Star Wars fucking Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you play a rock star without any of the effort needed to be a rock star. <laughs> you can't hear what he's saying, he's just like one plodding around. This is just shit, I gotta be honest. This is fucking dreadful. Fuck you, you can't. Tyrone, he's a badass. No, I don't understand the appeal of live music. I know there is the Dionysian pursuit. Oh no, having... live music sucks. <laughs> no, it's, it's a, the, I know there is this whole pursuit, and the appeal is like this Dionysian aspect of having so many people together, you feel as one with music. But can you imagine feeling as one with airsoft fatty, like a 350 pound <laughs> man, barely screaming at the top of his lungs over the bass boosted, like, boom, boom, boom. He's like, come on! Come on! I think they screwed him over and they didn't even turn the microphone on, so he's just fucking screaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> yeah, that makes it pretty impressive if you, if you, if you think about it that way. <laughs> I have no sunsets. Boomer from Left 4 Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. Just to go back to this, though, what do you think of every single image like this? Every single promotional and corporate image? It always has to be one of every race. It can never yeah, not be. I find it ironic. This is meant to, like, appeal to, like, a younger generation, yet all of these people look like they're at least in their mid-30s. This guy here looks like I'm Alex for some reason. He has, like, the I'm Alex genotype. Am I the only person who saw this? It was like, I'm Alex at the work for fucking McDonald's. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, that's who I thought of when I saw that, and I was like, fucking, I am Alex for no type right there. Okay, um, it's from Alex Gekmo right here, because this is pretty funny. Fat I am Alex. Notorious Chance Chaser, F Slur, co host of Fred of Tipster, Gay Fesh, was very upset with YouTube because of the automatic algorithm doing its job. Tipster fell off shortly after Gay Fresh started co hosting. Do you, are you aware of Gay Fesh? Wait, Gayfesh started co-hosting Tipster's show? Yes. What the fuck? It started appearing pretty that. frequently on there. The person, Gayfesh is someone who would flag so many people, you would be encouraged to block Gayfesh, otherwise Gayfesh would go out of his way to just block you. Uh, yeah, and report sure, you. I do have him blocked, yes, yeah. because if you didn't have him blocked, anything you'd like, he would go through people's likes and just forcefully report you. If and for some reason he was so retarded that if you if you had him blocked, he wouldn't have an alt or anything. He would just be like, "Well, I guess that's it." He just do the Ronnie McNutt like monologue right there and then. And in case you thought there was a chance this person changed, there are tweets from the past where encourage mass reporting accounts. Person is 38 years old, and you know, where's the person's age being brought into it? Because, much like Tipster, Tipster is now ingratiated with the LGBTQ community. Or rather, one aspect of it. The trans community. And this person is a 38 year old trans woman. So, um, put a one in chat if you think this person's going to be a yes, true queen, um, who passes, and then two in chat for a, um, ogre who, uh, relapses, I guess. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> what do you think this person's going to look like? He's going to be the ogre. He's going to eat... Uh, ogres are like onions. This is, uh, gay fish. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> my lady Keffles, uh, can I suck your toes? Oh, <laughs> God. Uh, um, we love trans people here, true queen. I mean, I have to agree with Nick with Tesco. I'm going with a one. This is true queen right here. Uh, <laughs> oh, did you see? Did you see that tweet by Nick with te testicles? Uh, where he said, where he got blocked by Finn East, he's like, I was just trying to, to, like, I was on your side, Finn. I was just trying to tell you about the harassers that were Nice and Tyrone. <laughs> yes, that was pretty interesting. And we'll talk about this now. Darker or the uh, goon, because Finn East has relapsed and he's just talking about trans women all day. He's talking about gooning all day. There's no left of shame and no element of shame for Finn now. East. He's just going on everything. And um, a few people finally got blocked, mainly because it was just like, Nick would 
course, at it's like a bunch of people and just got fucking people blow up. So now I have to have be informed via my KTS agents and the entire KTS army of Finny Swearabouts. But I will always be able to. And I still have an account that like nobody knows about. I can still see his shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. This is an old prank video from 2016. I don't. I never saw anyone talk about this. And this, you're gonna. <laughs> it's gonna blow your mind. And no one talked about this. People talked about the Sam um, Pepper ass grab prank, where he would go around in an oversized hoodie with an extra pocket for his hand to grab women's asses. There was the Sam Pepper um, prank where he had his friend killed by ISIS. Just to remind you, it's just a prank, bro. There's the um, the Oc TV prank or the Ethan and. and I mean, from Bradbury, where they go into the hood wearing a big white sheet and say, Oh, I'm just a ghost, I'm just a ghost. There's the putting a bomb down prank where it's like, drop it. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, everyone knows these pranks. But, Nice, did you remember this prank? What do you think this guy is about to do? He is in a white dressing gown. It looks like he's stolen it from a hotel shower. And it's a pre he's approaching a playground where he sees a child. What do you think this prank is going to be doing? Oh no, please don't tell me it's the ass grab prank. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just say this. He's honed in on this child. And he sees his target. I don't like the way you say child there, Tyrone. <laughs> and uh, in the words of Admiral Akbar, um, or not Admiral Akbar, in the words of, um, I think it's Wedge in the first Star Wars movie, Admiral Akbar is the It's a Trap. Stay on target is Wedge, I believe. Stay on target, and he's going to stay on target. Look at this. Oh, yeah, check that out! What the fuck? <laughs> no! This is the prank video, these are the prank videos that everyone forgot about. Yeah! <laughs> so the I prank is the flip, flip, like flip. his he has like stay in school written on here so he targets down kids and he's like yeah look at me and it looks like he's naked but he actually has stay in school and such like don't do drugs like you know if this is obviously staged because if it wasn't staged he would be laid the fuck out as soon as you'd see this guy like open up his dressing gown he'd be like shot in the fucking face at least over here he'd be shot in the face it doesn't matter depending where he is he might get fucking shot <laughs> No, look at this shit. It's insane. Because <laughs> to think about, okay, to think about doing like the ass grab prank or whatever, it's like, okay, degeneracy that can garner fucking things, but they're all fake. Who thinks, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the pedophile prank. I'm going to do. <laughs> 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 you know, if anyone sends this video to any employer, it's just like, oh, oh look at this prank. Someone just could just quit this and just be so nuclear. And even if someone puts it in context, there is no good context. Even the charitable interpretation is so awful. Look at this. <laughs> Stay in school, right? <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. real person be like, you are fucked up. Fuck off. <laughs> Look at this, right? Sees another child. He's honing in. Stay on target. Yeah, Stay, on target. Me, Stay on target. Stay on target. This is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, it's just a break, bro. <laughs> that one might be real. That one might be real. <laughs> Come on, you think I actually did no, that? No, it's not real. I take it back. No, it's <laughs> definitely not real. He doing it because a lot of people watch it. I don't remember a lot of people even talking about this guy though. Um. Oh my god. She's alright. Give me five. I'm going. I'm going. What do you think is gonna happen this time? <laughs> What do you think? Fucking CJ. It's CJ point. from Grove Street. He's he's being his child is being targeted let, right Let here. me guess. Let me guess. He gets really aggressive. He starts hitting him. Yeah, he tries to hit him. Let's see what happens. So he's approaching right here. Um, Austin O'Powell's is approaching from the trees. Peekaboo, I see you. <laughs> and <laughs> you picked the wrong house, fool. And it's like if this was not fake, do you know what people would do? Just any normal person in this situation, he wouldn't be. I'm going to grab you and just push you. I'm going to knock you the fuck out. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it's a joke, dude. Look, look, look. Don't do drugs. Oh, I get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, that was a funny joke. 
<laughs> it's not fucking funny. <laughs> oh, that's a funny joke, dude. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that funny? Not really. Of course, this is in their mind, Tyro. They can't do that. Yeah, of course, this is that. I mean, it's obviously fake, but it's just a it's absolutely good answer. Um, and now we have another thing. Um, we have a veto tweet. I don't normally have veto tweets on here. Wait, is that actually Roman Atwood? Are you kidding me? I I didn't recognize that being Roman Atwood. I just remember the name. Um, but if we go through here, uh, that's one of the more popular guys then. Um, okay, I'm not really familiar with Roman Atwood as a whole though, but if we go through here, it's just like, essentially, there was drama with Yellow Flash, because the Yellow Flash was always trying to insinuate that Vito was a pedophile based on his whole we tweet, basically, where it's like, we understand that breaking the existing laws is a no-no, in reference to, like, pedophiles. And yeah, a lot of people yeah. were trying to say like Vito was confessing, and people were doing this really semantic mind game with saying like Vito Freudian slipped, and he supplemented what he actually meant. And he, what he actually meant is like he's confessing to be a pedophile, rather than just using an improper word choice and using the royal we, which uses completely in context. And the interesting thing about this is that Connor right here said like I remember being one of the first people to notice the we comment. It was pretty funny in the moment, but your immediate clarification in my replies was pretty easy to understand. People to are still raging about it years later are wild. Well, do you know what immediate clarification is, Nice? Immediate clarification is when you see something and you're confused and you ask something and something is clarified. Do you know what immediate clarification isn't, Nice? Immediate is clarification not? isn't going several days after and still speculating that he is a pedophile. Because believe it or not, Connor is actually doing the exact same thing Leo Flash did right here. And in fact, I have the clip of it right here. We understand breaking the laws is a no- So it's like, what does non-offending mean, or whatever? Non-offending it, we understand. And it's like, we understand? And listen to Contro to explain this. This is some of the most dishonest stuff I've ever heard. And then to come around and say, like, it was pretty funny in the moment, but you're immediate clarification. Listen to this shit. Okay. Immediate clarification, by the way. Listen to this. So, right. I need Ethereum is speaking about non-offending pedophiles. He ends the sentence particularly saying, if you are into kids, there's only one solution, which I'm assuming he means like execution or something, whatever. If you're into kids, there's only one solution. He's speaking about non-offending pedophiles. Vito also is speaking about non-offending pedophiles. Nowhere in here does he mention society. He's not like, he's not like, we as a society, Needs to have everything around the pedophiles. The subject. Immediate clarification. This is what I call immediate clarification, Nice. That's pretty confused in the moment. This is a few days after the tweet, by the way. The sentence is not offending pedophiles. Mm -hmm. So, when someone says, What does not offending mean? That you've never touched a kid or you've never looked at CP? If you're into kids, there's only one solution. Then, when right. he says not offending means that we understand breaking the existing laws is a no no, he's still speaking of that subject so i what that doesn't make any sense that's a completely toe to half that doesn't make any fucking sense it's like the worst explanation i may have ever heard um <laughs> you know, every now and then connor has to he, he's taking his l it's just so it's dishonest that's what it is it's just so unfortunately dishonest and um it's like pretty easy to understand or whatever Pretty fucking easy to understand. It's like, he argued about it on this stream, completely flabbergasted and like, speculated aimlessly that he was confessing to being a pedophile. It's the furthest thing from, like, immediate clarification. He went out of his way to muddy the water, days after. How long did it take for you to find this stream? Because, like... I, uh, you know, sometimes I, I wanna... I, when I saw that tweet, I was like, there's no way this is fucking true. I completely remember this being the opposite case. And I was correct. Obviously... Like I said, he could just switch it to be like, well, I meant we as a society, and maybe it was just a misspeak, but in this context, that we is referencing not offending pedophiles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. The interesting thing in this is that there are some people that agree with him, some pretty funny guys that do agree with him, some being Ashes React, he's got on his side in the chat. Um, there's a few people that are pretty funny that are like agreeing, agreeing um, with him. Jessica Pizzle, Vito is a map. You know, a lot of people just saying, you know, and just like immediately agreeing. Pretty funny when you look in retroactively into the chat on the left. Um, and look at this. Default Dan is also agreeing as well. Uh, daddy Fat Snaps, like <laughs> the guy who lumped his Daddy Fat Snaps. Um, 
this is a uh, black pill right here. And I suddenly hate everything about my boyfriend of four years. I'm torn on what to do. Advice needed. This is what I would call a definitive woman moment right here. Hi guys, this is going to hurt me to type, but I could really use some advice. My boyfriend and I have been together since freshman year of high school, and now a freshman in college. We go to different school, but they're not too far apart, and we visit each other every weekend or so. And I'll just get right into it. I think I may genuinely hate him. It's so fucked Bro, up because what? he's the sweetest, most hopeful, most generous, just perfect boyfriend. He's never been nothing but good to me in these last four years, but lately I found myself disliking more and more things about him. Last time we find out, everything about him pissed me off rationally. The way he stood, the way he wore, the way he cooked, the way his hobbies. I started thinking he was too thin, too short, not too hairy enough, not too masculine enough. So I was picking every perceived fours. That's why I found myself checking on other people. So what I call this as like a woman moment is that there's a <laughs> lot of women who... Even if they are in a, a paradigm that does not reflect the modern social paradigm, which is pretty hard, of feminism and progressivism, of just encouraging and validating very short-term, shorter and shorter relationships, you have people who get into cycles like this, and what is reflected about cycles like this, it's people who are motivated, and their decision-making process is ruled by excitement. It doesn't matter how much money they have, it doesn't matter what they do, because realistically it's just like, we are stuck in a progressive cycle where people are being validated that people can't really escape from. And I, there are a few solutions to it, but one of the solutions isn't to try to reinstate the power of, for example, foreign institutions such as marriage. For example, the traditional family unit cannot return as its mainstream counterpart anymore. It is for gone. And the reason it is for gone is because women have ultimately chosen it from the progress of progressivism. What do I mean by this? It means it doesn't exist anymore because most people who are being validated prioritize excitement over anything else, so the traditional unit will not function. That's why. Um, so, of such, when I hear people saying, like, oh yes, people, we need to return to what we once were in terms of unit to govern society, well, it won't function in this modern social paradigm, and it's why I do agree with some things of the red pill sphere, uh, that being the over-ideology of risk management in itself, because a man has to navigate it, and eventually, probably, once their power are taken away from certain institutions, I mean, realistically, we're in the decadence stage right now, where things will get a lot worse before they'll get better again, but things will probably eventually get better again. Certain institutions, though, have to fall, and a lot of power has to go away, and things have to get a lot better before a lot of people realize how bad it truly is. And then, once that happens, we will not even be back to where we where we began. We will be something completely different once again, and hopefully that will be better, as a new system completely inv convinces itself. You hedonistic treadmill. Um, everything's a fucking treadmill now, this is, I don't know, I prefer the euphemism treadmill. But, um, even Nietzsche talked about, however, how a lot of people govern themselves on excitement. Because for the man, for the, uh, for the man who wants to become the higher man, you have to forego, um, ambition, you have to forego a lot of stuff you want to do in life, and have sacrifice, and that sacrifice is the duty within yourself, and this will power yourself to become, and avoid becoming the mediocre man. But now what we have is that we have the mediocre woman, which is achieved slightly differently. The mediocre woman is achieved through excitement to become this source of just complete validation, where it goes to other people to validate their existence first. So much long-term relationships cannot be achieved. The mediocrity cannot be achieved because truthfully, while um, a lot of feminists may tell you that, you know, just cleaning in the dishes all day and being a mother is an absolutely awful and restricted lifestyle, it is also one that is actually very difficult to do. And once you have the mediocre woman become the norm, thanks to the overwhelming sense of um, progressivism becoming the norm, and people's decisions, failures, everything becoming validated under this, you have both mediocre man and mediocre woman becoming the cultural norm. Neither who have much impact or resonance within the existing sense of culture whatsoever, and neither of which who have any form of social mobility. People are just forced into this threshold as the threshold to become non-mediocre, becomes higher and higher within each passing day. Um, so, for example, existing concepts that exist in certain things, like, for example, treadmills, um, certain treadmills, the same thing is like recalling certain philosophical concepts like a razor, um, it's like an overused thing, I prefer Nietzsche's kind of sense of mediocrity in the Apollony and in the Dionysian man. Um, okay, um, 
Okay, Tyrant is much more articular, could be a wrong word, when he does not have the bad influences on voice chat saying edgy things. In those, he picks more drama topics to focus on. It depends. Uh, aren't most women mid, aka mediocre, because they're excessive risk adverse tendencies? The IQ charts show this. Well, that is um, what you're talking about there is the fact that um, the bell curve for men and women is slightly different. It's a fact that, like, in certain, for example, it's known that a lot of women perform better in terms of an academic institution, but that doesn't really truly reflect IQ as well. And also, in the middle, the center part of the bell curve is far more equal in terms of women. Uh, but it's also due to a bunch of reasons because it's like there is far more women that can't really survive by themselves than there are men who can survive by themselves. So it's almost like a nature that has been born into them to kind of collaborate in terms of social click. Um, okay, so because of the risk taking tendencies. Well, it's it's interesting because risk taking tendencies, it's like um, you can have security in sacrifice. You can sacrifice, for example, a lot of things that you want to be to provide a better life for your future. And this may not seem like a risk-taking thing, but it's grounded in another individual. It's something that supports another individual as it seems. It's something that props up something else to make it flourish. It's something that can truly maintain and sustain something. And something that is mediocre cannot do that fundamentally. Something that is mediocre always has to have something that validates, either validates it or economically supports it. Um. But that's like a Nietzsche concept. Mississippi Goon Squad deputies get year-long sentences for racist torture of two black men. Pretty funny right here. Um, okay, um, female intelligence triumphs when no learning or adaptations is required, probably because it means that a good with school exercises, probably because the schooling is tailored for girls. Yes, that is also a thing I've talked about before, how the Prussian school system is biased towards a lot of women. And, um, how, I, I mean, I don't think even the Prussian schooling education system is very good to even put a man in there, regardless if it's private or public. I mean, the public education system, if he is too isolating or self-loathing, then everyone's just going to call him a school shooter until he eventually does become a school shooter. His neuroticism is going to be off the charts, and he's going to probably be produced by one of the worst institutions known to man. And if none of that does happen, then you have the numerous amounts of people who take advantage of young men in times of institutions when most actual molestations occur in terms of institutionally um so it's looking pretty dire for that so let's just send him to a private school instead would be the world of free theory where for example the private school where instead of your kids being trans to death uh because well in so it depends they can't be done that they're going to be taught to hate their own identity that they should fight for palestine despite being in a completely foreign country and they are going to be taught that their life itself is completely shameful and the people who brought them into this school this privileged position um they should not be like these people whatsoever they should be more like the mediocre man for some reason and that was the only time, and I feel like it is because of this idealized victimhood that I talked about on my Warhammer Vermintide stream. When you promote this idea of victim, or realistically, every form of identity politics ends in victimhood, because victimhood is the greatest form of identity you can wear. The veneer of victimhood, regardless of if you are an actual victim, it doesn't matter anymore, which is why it must be abolished and annihilated. Because as soon as something cannot be fixed anymore, it must be destroyed, such concepts, and it must be created in the form of the new thing to adapt to the current social paradigm that is created around this zeitgeist of the old one. It must adapt to either better or for worse, but the overturn window is not something that can immediately be forfeited and be slammed shut in one or either direction. So it's a slow and aching process. That is unfortunate because it just means that things will take a while to get better than it currently is. But that's beside the point. Um, Hunter Elwood, 31, was sentenced to 20 years in prison, while Jeffrey Middleton, the 46 year old later of the so called Goon Squad that abused the men, was given 17 points. Yeah, there's a Goon Squad right here. Yeah. Um, former law enforcement officers who admit to torturing Jenkins and Parker are ready to get sanctioned last week. Before sentencing Edward and Middleton separately, the US judge Tom Lee called the former deputy's actions egregious and despicable and said a sentence at the top of the guideline range was justified. This terror began on January uh, 24th, 2023, with the racist call to extrajudicial violence when a written 
when a white person from Rankin County, and this is pretty interesting, this entire thing, because it's like the goon squad was raining fucking terror. I mean, we've heard of corrupt cops. This guy is with the fucking goon squad. Victimhood equals unlimited power. This also explains the wedge issue politics by keeping them around an informal amount of grifting power. Because victimhood, it doesn't exist in terms of in um, people, it exists in terms of an idea of victimhood. And what is the greatest victimhood? Then you hate your own identity, so you prop up something else in terms of the victimhood power and, and the concept of such. So, for example, there is no terms of self-preservation with so many people, that idea, this whole thing of victimhood, and realistically, then you get into the Nietzsche concept of pity, where a societal act of both charity and kindness are turned on its head. As duty and sacrifice are forgone, you have these existing old tenets of charity, which are then turned into pity, and perfectly create its own destruction to be reveled in. Um... Oh, that's what I think anyway. Talking about destruction to be reveled in, is this a machine or this is a man? I posted this on Friday <laughs> being World Down Syndrome Day. Today is Sunday, World Turper Tuberculosis Day. But this is Oracle, we have talked about him before. Is he incoherent or is he eligible? However, he was playing the Final Fantasy games and he found some animals. We got cows. We got, we got baba fucking kales! Can you link us that They're moving that it up in here! Or do you just randomly see it? I found this, and this is my favorite Oracle video of all time now. We got cows! <laughs> okay, so what is actually happening in this video? He is talking about cows, and nothing really else. Look at this. We got, we got baba fucking kales! They're moving, moving it up, up in here! here. We got baba fucking moving up in here, here boy! We got kales! <laughs> I said we got kales! <laughs> what is happening? Kales! Yeah. Move, this is what happened to Muhammad Ali. Move, it's like the, when Muhammad Ali became a vegetable, got Alzheimer's. This is what he would only see people say. It's like a fucking flashbone SpongeBob and a burn, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. They would see like someone talking, and it would be like normal person talking, like "Hey, Mermaid Man," and it'll be like "Cows, we got motherfucking cows, we are never here, boy, we got cows." Your cows. I I did I we did got, try watching this. Uh, this episode, by the way, because I was like, how does he normally talk in these videos? And most of the time, he's just kind of sitting there. <laughs> right, we're gonna make this is how Oracle talks. He talks as a Swedish chef, which is a shame because his first language is actually English, unlike me. Um, Oracle, is this how Oracle actually looks? Yes, this is probably one of the better photos of Oracle. Uh, I'll show you Oracle's current profile picture. He is an ogre who lives under the bridge. I mean, we are talking about Oracle. He is an interesting guy. He has got a Amazon wish list, which he has BDSM. Um, chastity belts and other weird fetish gear for public <laughs> consumption on his Amazon witch list that I probably can't show. He is an interesting guy, and this is Oracle's current Twitter profile picture. What do you think of this? He's edited in the sparkle, Mr. Sparkle, <laughs> into his glasses. What do you think of that? <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of his beard, by the way? Um. <laughs> Uh, he's, a, he's a he's a wonderful man, Tyro. I, I can I could never handle it. <laughs> yeah, Oracle's great. Cows, they're moving up, up in here. here. Motherfucking cows, moving up in here, here, boy. We, we got, got mother cows. I said we got cows. Yeah, cows. Motherfucker, you motherfucker. <laughs> great, that's amazing, Mr. Anderson. Also, this is a stream that I did. This is, right here, the N-League. This was P-Paul Riveter, and I did a stream because we were talking about Piss Paul Riveter, a guy that I have done a drum stream on before, exposing, nailing to the wall, and I spat the fucking nails in his coffin because P-Paul Riveter left. He got exposed because I was saying for the longest time there was writing on the wall with Riveter. There was writing on the wall. He was dishonest. He was unflinchingly dishonest, and he would not admit he was wrong. The C.J. Brown situation was only a matter of his projected sense of ego because Riveter would have refused to acknowledge he did anything wrong wrong he would just say um you know i um did i lie about cj yes why because i was petty as fuck and no one gave a fuck because no one gave a fuck about cj but 
I gave a fuck about CJ, and the reason was, was because there was terminal writing on the wall. It's the same thing as I can identify immediately that Dark Viper AU is not suited for the commentary community, because it's a community that is a derivative melting pot where everyone is inherently combative, and someone who cannot take criticism, lounges in pity and validation from other women, like a tipster figure, is not suited to the commentary community either. This was Riveter, and he came back um, on a stream, and we talked about his comeback video um, on here. But most of the stream is not about Riveter. I talk about um, I talk about Spondo, and I talk about mostly Nietzsche and how it relates to Spondo's failed relationships and stuff like this, and the key, key warning signs that he foregone because he did not identify them correctly. That is mostly what we talk about on the stream and not Riveter, because why do we not talk about Riveter? Because his comeback video was the story on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where he has the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory 2005 video game for the PC, and he has this as background footage while Riveter poorly mumbles over himself, reading a script out of breath like Izzy Tan. It's like a pretty insufferable video to sit through. But, you know, there's so many, you know, there's so many things, but I ultimately congratulated him because it's like, you know, probably he's going to come back better. I don't give a shit. Um, but he kind of talked about an existing things on here. Um, you know, go ahead, Riveter. If you want to make videos, go ahead. I mean, you know, it's just a bad video. There's a lot of people on YouTube who've made bad videos. And to be honest, it's a bad video because it's not funny. It's not interesting. It's just boring. So there's no reason to even play much of it. I'll play 10 seconds of it. Timothy Burton version is more in line with the original book you know what i mean yeah there's no real reason to talk about it however it's such a weird game to like decide to start your your game uh, your game essay career i guess it's not really no so he's reviewing the book but he's using footage from the game as background footage because he can't share the movie obviously Oh, he's reviewing the book. Okay. Yes, but he can't show because he's doing the whole story and he's doing the snow pisser theory. But there was some pretty interesting comments on here where it's like people praising him, saying like, "Oh yeah, we love Riveter. We love Riveter. Magadets. We love Riveter. Uh, you know, we love Riveter. You know, all these people saying like, ha you know, hands in the air. We just love Riveter because we just do not care." However, and this is a comment I think everyone should like in chat. It's something that went through the entire thing. So, you know, this story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Augustus Gloop, big and vile, so big and greedy and infantile. The fat guy who got shot, who, who went into a sea of chocolate, and he was em he was embraced the chocolate and got stuck in a tube because he was so overweight. You know, Augustus Gloop, you know, you know the story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know? I mean, everyone knows the story, right? Yeah. Well, what have I told you? The biggest comment on here happened to be from um, Austin O'Powers Free. I love chocolate pudding. <laughs> 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 I wonder who this is. The certain uh, profile picture that someone endearly created that used for a lot of accounts of Austin O'Powers. I wonder who created this, but um, it is the most liked comment, and he did like. <laughs> 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 right. <Fantastic. laughs> Everyone could go like this comment if they want. That's great. <laughs> I just want comments like this to be liked. It's like people are randomly like liking and supporting the fucking KTS war stuff. Like Austin the Power is being fucking like I love black women or whatever. <laughs> okay. This I kinda talked about some of this last day. This is this is retarded right here. Since Joe Cat is getting put on blast again, I'd like to remind everyone that his girlfriend drew this in response to the initial wave of hate. She's a legend for this. When I initially, when I see people being mean to my boyfriend online, where I was on the internet are saying you need to get laid, and I think they might be right, but I'm in the middle of a work day to escape this. So it's like, you know, it's pretty funny, whatever. And, you know, that's not the reason I'm showing this image, because, you know, it's whatever. It's kind of a funny joke. But the, apparently the girl who made this had asexual in bio, so it raised to me a question, Neves. What the fuck is asexuality? Because it's definitely, in terms of this person, it's someone who's identifying with the concept of enjoying sex, even if with someone they would like to be with. Um, and ironically, it's like, um, this person says here, 
that's not how asexuality works. Asexuals might like sex, but only with one specific person. Only having sex with someone they feel like they have a romantic connection with is also asexuality. It's not just people without an incest to sex. You know, that's I a retarded definition, but I'm pretty sure there's already a label for that, and it's not asexuality. Well, <laughs> no, because they call asexuality now a spectrum umbrella, because I was looking into this, and it's just a bunch of bullshit pseudoscience, not based on anything. Like a lot of, you know... A lot of stuff times like this are called. And ironically enough, it's people like this who accidentally reverse engineer what a normal status quo sexuality was before the past progressives 50 or so years had to deconstruct it because it was harmful. Because normal, in quotation marks, has become code for these people as reactionary, so they have to name it something weird and nonsensical. So to them, a normal relationship structure that has existed in the social paradigm around 80 or even to 100 years ago, for the longest portion of time, is now called asexuality, and it's an asexual spectrum. Spectrum being so that everyone is included. And I always was saying, in 2013, the worst thing they did with autism was, um, rule it as a, um, is a spectrum disorder instead of a neurological condition because it just allowed everyone to be a part of it with neurological you know, dis disabilities. They could be venerated and, and validated, which I think is the worst thing to do with any form of mental disorder. Mental syndrome, rather. Mental neurological syndrome. And, um... Yeah, ironically, it's, it's so funny to me because it's like people have to convince themselves of the exceptions and now the exceptions themselves have become the status quo and now all these standard relationship dynamics are asexual because it's these people who have to just convince themselves of one thing and it just it just automates in this. It's just it's just nonsense. It's just language has been calling um, efficiently butchered, but I feel like this application of asexual, because it's just like, if you actually look at the normal definition of asexuality, you have to view it in the lens of, okay, the traditional sense of being used in just sexuality as a whole cannot actually apply to humanity, even if someone is actually sexually inert, it is not someone who is asexual. Ironically though, do you know what I think is a better term than asexuality? Incel. Because I think someone who experiences no sexual desire whatsoever throughout their entire life, I think there's something wrong with that, and I don't think that isn't something normal. I think that is a deviation, and I don't think you should be going for that as an ultimate goal. Because what that does is it takes away further opportunities and makes certain things harder in the future. But obviously they will never use the term incel, because incel is only ever used incorrectly. While A, so, you know, every word just has to be used incorrectly because nothing means anything anymore. So everything is worthless. So like, what the fuck is the point? Um, let's go through this. Example of refusal skills for sexual activity. It's pretty funny right here. This is, uh, this is not related to asexuality. It's just funny me, my fault. Eric. That movie was very good, Samantha, but I think we should do something else now. What do you want to do then? I was hoping we could engage in sexual activity. Actually, um, I'll be Eric, you be Samantha, niece. All right. Start from uh, line four, right, right here. Alright. I'm sorry, Eric, but I don't think I want to do that. Please, Samantha, I would really like to perform sexual activity with you. I'm truly apologetic, but I would like you to know that I am currently practicing abstinence because it is only truly safe form. It is the only truly safe form of sex and STD prevention with 100% uh, with 100% sex success rate and the cost of zero US dollars. The funny thing about this is that abstinence is capitalized like you're playing a Pokemon video game and it's like they give you like so much text but they capitalize and turn like another word one color so like a kid playing the game could know what town he goes to next and like red and blue or it's like I'd really like abstinence <laughs> you know <laughs> that's what I was reading. I understand this, Samantha. I agree that abstinence is the only way to truly prevent teenage pregnancy and STDs at a young age. I apologize for my selfish and foolish ways. Good night. I must be leaving now. If my planet needs me. <laughs> Thank you for respecting and understanding my viewpoint, Eric. Good night. I'd enjoy if we went on another date soon. Thank you. I would also enjoy that. Tyro needs to cop stop calling himself that? Why do I need to stop calling myself that, Adrian? It's a based word. It's a based word. This is what real, like, human interaction sounds like. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. I didn't even- I didn't even think of that, but that is a, a space odyssey reference. But, um... 
Talking about something pretty funny, um, is this Spondo getting re rejected by, um... Wait, I can't see what that says, uh... Oh, great, that's absolutely cancer. Um, fucking my chat was too small, so it censored that bit here. Um, Beaver Man is claiming he had a minor's nudes. I got tabs. Well, knowing that what we know from the streams of what Spondar was sent and what other people were sent around, and just what a lot of people were sent around, now retroactively, I found this screenshot and I was like, you know what, this is probably true and no one actually ever gave a shit. And I feel, I know, notify people that we are back, we are live. Um, that is kind of, Tyrant's bathtub over for, so, okay. So, it is, it is. People are saying it's back. Uh, uh, I can, I can tell no BS. So, essentially, what is pretty funny is that everyone should refresh. Refresh, uh, we're back. Uh, sorry, my internet is just incredibly poor. Which is why stuff like this occurs. But, do you know what's funny? It's that this is probably true. News. Why is this probably yes. true? It's because, and the reason that this never got pushed back was the fact that if you push back on this, you, Tamps would have to reveal that Tamps' news have been sent to like every single fucking person who asked for them, including Swandal, which is something that we found out on KTS, um, when he confessed on New Year's Day of getting, um, of seeing Tamps' uh, chocolate starfish. Um, Aww. yeah, that's a, that's a thing that exists on the internet now. Um, so that's, that's great, that's great to hear. Um, but, um, I hope everyone's back. Um, oh, fuck. I don't know. I just, when when my stream goes out, I don't know, um, can someone tell me what the best thing is to do? Where I say, like, um, for example, when my stream goes out, what should I do? Should I put on Twitter, like, oh, we're back? Because I know people are probably going to, like, fucking, I'm turning off this shit now. You know what I mean? What's, what's the best way to call people back? Uh... I think I think a Discord notification would be good. So you okay. Like um, I'm just gonna do a Discord one where everyone says like, "We're back online." Okay, that's the best way. So let's proceed. Um, what do you think of this Wojak? Nice. <laughs> let's uh. I'm sorry. I'm fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. Um. Get over here! <laughs> yeah. uh, I was talking about this briefly on my uh, Vermintide stream, but it's uh, percent of ge uh, German ancestry right here. Thirty percent more in the Midwest, including in Minnesota as well. Um, pretty funny. Uh, damn, all of those Kiku Wojaks. Someone now who has been, you know, he not had a triumphant return was People Rota. He's now been put on Kiwi Farms, so. Lol. Yeah. <laughs> kiwi farms. Is this just a random kiwi farmer too? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's just on it. Right. And the funny thing about this is that um, there's a few people that have been on kiwi farms. The birth controller hasn't, but um, I have been on certain alts like um, the Scully Exterminator. Peter Scully the Exterminator has been on kiwi farms before, in some pretty funny and identifiable ways. Um, but we've went over Riveter already on the stream today. We have went over his triumphant failings in terms of return. Um, and a lot of these are, are ultimately fruitless. However, someone else, uh, some KTS favorites who were retweeting, quote tweeting the Riveter return um, thing, who frequently uh, support the show, Tenansa saying no, and Spondal saying um, give up, basically. Also, now archived forever on Kiwi Farms. Um, the only birth control media so far on Kiwi Farms is, um, you know, is fucking, um, Peter Scully Exterminator. But one day, maybe one day, Finn East will be on there. That's the dream. Um, a Finn East thread, but I don't think it now warrants the time to put him on there. In the original, um, Twitter, I said that Pygo story continues. How does it continue? I don't, I don't wanna. <laughs> this is, like, terrible. <laughs> well, news. The story does continue, as every story inevitably does, that has an end. Um, Kiku, what the fuck? I've heard you've been sending videos shit talking to my friends who don't even know. Why are you trying to my friendship for you to reason, you asshole? What this ultimate end is Kiku, a resident uh, KTS uh, Vojak creator, um, so this thread on Twitter. Where this is a thing that we've known about, and I have said multiple times on my thing, where there is people listen to fucking 
Pygo's private account, who were underage, but Pygo was only like 18 to begin with. So I didn't really care, but it's pretty funny how immediately when confronted on this, it's just like, yeah, I won't do it again, and then does it again. The same thing. That's what's funny about it. Um, Pie girl is so fucking retarded. Like, you know, you know, you get one red flag, you get two red flags. They were a minor at the time. Oh, well, big deal. And they're, they're an adult at this point, right? They're 18. Yes. It's like so fucking ridiculous. Like, like this this person does, doesn't deserve any more leniency at this point. Yeah, so many red flags. You're fucking spelling surrender in semi for. So what happens, Vicky? Well, essentially, Pygo has three accounts. There's the Pygo main account. There's the Pygo private account, and then there's the private Pygo private account where the nudes are sent for some reason. Because what a surprise that a lot of the trans community are hypersexual. Because this is because of a few things. There is a hype. There is um, a far overabundancy of the mean average of people who are hyper and hyposexual that fit onto the transgender spectrum. Being so because they are have an overlap of autism, and it's the same pattern. It's the same linear progression that occurs in autism as well of hyper and hyposexuality. So people who you know realistically, it's like why do trans people always go with themselves and why there's so many people that infiltrate so many different communities it's because they have to validate themselves because truthfully it's like who if someone calls himself a beautiful woman or whatever then you have this circle back feedback loop of all calling themselves the same thing an echo chamber but it's how they have to exist on these small things on the internet and it's because so many people are autistic they are needs they don't do anything it's why they only exist on these certain different planes it's pretty interesting um, because I think it's a pretty, pretty big problem of overall transgenderism as a whole. I don't think it's a, I think the entire idea of more people who think there is something wrong with their body that they have to change everything about it. I think that's an overall net negative for humankind. I don't think it's an identity that should be celebrated. I always thought when I was younger, transgenderism should be a problem that should be fixed. Why wouldn't it be a thing that would be fixed? But now everyone has be validated, like, niece. V Vito Gasoldi is a woman in the state of California. He has not went on hormones, he has not even had anything done, he just says he's a woman. The birth controller can just say, I am a woman right now and be a woman. You know, it means nothing anymore. And once everything means nothing, it means everyone can exploit it. Because realistically, now the only way to advance in any social paradigm for the mediocre man without the, without the means of being good at work is for exploiting the existing, sit, um, for existing situations, which I suggest for most people, which is why Vito did the woman thing so he can get a loan from the fucking American government who are just going to give it to him because of so many pe fucking um, transgender people who are just needs, and they think just giving money to needs is going to fix this, fix their situation, which never works. Never works. Um, because no behavior is actually taught, no, no behavior is actually done. So these are the M's between um, Pygo and Kiku right here. Wait, Pygo, you know, it's like 16, right? Aren't you kind of dumb to post a picture of your tits for 16-year-olds to see? I flanked the post of having nudity, so you needed to have account six at 18 in order to see it. Kiku, for example, has an account of like 17, and it says it in the bio. I just got welcomed in and grandfathered into that account, which like, shows the fucking ass and shit. So uh, you think about that for a second, and it's like, that's pretty retarded. You know, unironically kind of victim blaming here. <laughs> Um, feels like, well, I gotta be honest, is anyone really a victim here? It's just the fact that it's pie. I'm more, I'm more making a joke and being like, it's your fault you, you looked at the porn. I may have let you into my fucking, uh, my nudes account, but it's your fault for looking at yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, my point. That's my point there. So this Olivia is the Goonie account? Probably not. Probably to me, for me. Uh, I think this is the main world, I think. So how do you know- okay, I'm not gonna send the fucking things on her, um... Okay, uh, da -da -da -da, so you go through here, some of this is pretty funny. This is actually- Are we gonna be reading this or no? I don't think a lot of it is worth reading, because a lot of it is stuff we have went over already, of stuff, for example, that, um, you know, that is letting in people in. And I guess we're just publicizing it for other people to see, I guess, then, huh? Yes, because on the last KTS, we talked about this pretty in depth, and we're just gonna gloss over it, because I don't think realistically there needs to be much other than just sugarcoating the information because Nice, we've talked about this at depth before and it's just echoing the same thing. Pygraph's response is just, okay, sure. And just it completely just deters back to normal, back again. But you know, I'm a big fan of crime statistics. So we got to transform and we got to have this 41% statistic transform into optimist crime. 
You could have this one. I'm going back to Cybertron. Optimus Crime is in the building, and he's not happy with the transgender community needs. Can you guess why? <laughs> why, why is Optimus Crime un, un, like d dissuaded with a disillusioned with the trans community? Okay, like, I'm going to have a few predictions. I want people to put in chat right now. Why is Optimus Crime the trans... The Nigeroi tra Transformer. He can transform himself for anything through a food stamp to a watermelon to a KFC bargain bucket. Everything except from a bike because he will just steal that anyway. Um, Optimus Crime has a severe issue with the transgender community. Can anyone in chat guess why that is? I would like to see your predi uh, predictions in chat right now. Um, Mr. Fuel say, black don't like transgenders. Well, <laughs> who knows? That may be one of the reasons. But the reasons why, um, the reason why Optimus Crime doesn't like the transgender community is because they're all over what they're eating all the food. They're stealing all the watermelons. You may be wondering, Nice, why is that? Basically, one in four gender, transgender and gender diverse patients presenting for initial gender affirming surgery, the consultancy was denied due to their obesity. <laughs> All right. It's more machine than a man. So these people were so overweight, they couldn't even have the penile inversion surgery. The penile inversion surgery is where you get the neo-vagina by having your existing skin um, kind of protrude. It's inverted. And um, yeah, that's how the neo-vagina is created, a void of the sexual fulfillment that creates yourself and realistically is just an Enoch castration method that has existed for a long time. Um, it is effectively worthless and in all the existing practices, but what you kind of have to be is not obese. That is the minimum requirement. It's the minimum requirement for a lot of things. You'd think obesity is the minimum requirement for just sitting or standing up. But no, apparently the transgender community, in their neatdom, they can't even find the time to maybe go for a walk every once in a while. The transgender community is in shambles, ladies and gentlemen. They have been defeated. They will die out in a matter of, like, hours, probably. Well, there is the 41% <laughs> statistic, and I, that statistic is going, you know, 41, 42, and 43. Bunk says it's because the world is transphobic, and the world is against transphobic. I think certain people have to sacrifice certain parts of an existing identity to affirm to a culture. And for example, trans being a transvestite or an Ed Wood going to a party in the privacy of such private institution or private party was considered, I mean, from certain people, from a deontological perspective, as degenerate, but for the majority of the population, as long as they weren't seeing it occur, they didn't truly care. Um, and I feel like that's most people's perspective, but when these people are just trying to claim that I exist in some certain institution, it's like, okay, my patience with you is going down. Um, and then it's not just that, it's just the fact that I can exist in another woman's space, or I can exist in other gendered space. Look at Mr. Menu. He's existed, he wants to be in exclusively gay spas and gay parties, and he can't even be in there anymore because they are flooded with, um, people, transgender men, female to males, who absolutely despise women, which is a large group of fucking people. That's a fucking large group of people, by the way. Um, because these people are like, absolutely hate themselves and they hate all the people around them, and they get coaxed into, and then it's like, not only that news, you have these people being occupied by these faces, and then you have nail and coffin. They are literally coming for your kids. So, you know, you have people like John Money and Kinsley, and those people are now viewed by um, certain government as positive role models, as John Money was just carrying out the acts of helping an intersect boy with his life, despite the fact that his uh, that his twin brother, who had the exact same condition of phimosis, healed naturally over time. No, John Money's but surgeries on the boy was perfectly um, perfectly good and justified and morally righteous because he was intersect. Intersex. You know, you have a lot of these mainstream opinions, which is what I believe can results in this new statistic that more people in the last 10 years, um, LGBT overall tolerance rate has gone down globally in the last 10 years. Not maintained, 
not stayed the same, not even gone up. It's the first time it's ever went down. And it's in these last 10 years, the things where there's more pride for rage than ever. They actually have gay marriage, they pushed for gay marriage, and they got it. But still somehow, the LGBT community, which is so fractured and all those groups are so vastly different, Mr. Meno suggests that all those groups should be their own separate identity, but do you know what I think? I think we should forgo identities. I think these identities are cancer, and I think identities like this will just produce certain institutions that once again for being just protected victims. Because we talked about this earlier in the stream, as a certain identity gets validated and approved, it gets protected because of victimhood is the most powerful asset. I think, Nice, after the great change occurs, being such a slow process, a slow and arduous process, things need to be rebuilt without the sense of identities. And I am so talking like I'm Gendo Bakari being pro seal here, but who knows? Who knows? I get, I get what you mean here. I've always seen uh, the term identity as nothing more than a utility of language, simply as a way of getting across information quickly about your character. But a lot of people will use identity as a way to like form their entire lifestyle and like it, it, like it cha basically their identity is ev everything to them rather than it just a, a utility of trying to get across information. The worst part about utility is more than such. It's a blood oath. There is gay men like Mr. Menno who are being told directly, you're not gay if you don't support transgenderism. They just have to, because of certain situations that they cannot change environmentally, they have to affirm all this other stuff that is attached to this identity. Do you know what I think? Mr. Menno hasn't gone as far to say, but I think I, realistically, the push towards people being more accepted, and this is probably going to be one of the more left-wing things I've ever said, is to forgo such identity. Um, but it's like, oh, are you suggesting a pro-classless situation? No, it's just identity in terms of actual groups that don't contribute in terms of such. Um, that's what I am pro. Um, culture will still obviously persist. Um, but I am also, also against immigration as well, in terms of mass immigration. In terms of ceasing temporary immigration as well. Um, which I think is just a natural step that kind of has to occur within Europe because it's gotten so fucking bad. Um, and even in America. Do you know how bad immigration is going to get in America? Do you know amongst people in America, the only pe group of people in America who have a fertility rate above the replacement rate is people with an IQ of 80. An IQ of 80. Right. Those are the only group, that is the only group of people in the entirety of America that have a fertility rate above replacement. What does that mean, Nice? Well, it means that the mean average population is going to get dumber and dumber over time, which is never a good thing whatsoever. And it's just, what the fuck can someone with 80 IQ ever do? Not much. That's the problem. This is the problem. In a hard and more changing world, someone with actual 80 IQ, 80 IQ, may not even be able to work in McDonald's anymore. That is kind of put at around 85. What do I mean by 85 IQ? What do these numbers mean? Because currently around 15% of the American population is around 85 IQ or lower. It means someone who looks at a bus timetable and is completely confused, cannot read it and cannot comprehend it, has to have someone completely explain it every single time. It is above their aptitude of reasoning. Um, it's someone who looks at the McDonald's machines and they cannot, they cannot do it. However, um, something that has been examined and looked at as something pretty easy is the domestic trucking industry. Which, although the mean average, it's the most popular profession for people who have who do not have a college degree who are men in America. And the funny thing about it is because driving in America is very easy. It's the easiest place to drive in the world, despite the fact that there's so many traffic accidents. It's because the entire country has complete fucking straight roads. It doesn't have the European system of towns that were made for walking. Um, it doesn't have that kind of philosophy. Everything is so sectioned apart. I mean, we constantly talk about this in terms of walkable cities that are present everywhere else in the world. But in America, they don't exist, and that technological step has to be achieved by a car. Um, and it's why certain people, you can learn to drive so absurdly young in America. It's why you can be taught to drive, and like people can be taught to drive without being taught to like parallel park or even basic maneuvers. There is no like road markings or stuff like this. It's the easiest thing to really do. And currently, the mean IQ um, for truck drivers is around 95 to 96. 
but it's the most pro- because realistically, you look into this mean average, but there is people that deviate up and down who are below and above. So, one of the few things that people with an ATI IQ can do, which is the domestic trucking industry, aka trucking inside of America, is going to get more and more dangerous as people with a lower IQ are driving these deadly machines that could easily just accidentally kill someone if they fuck it up. So, and it's like, well, why am I saying specifically in this one industry, Tyrone? Why am I ignoring all nuance? It's because every other industry is getting too complex for these people to work in. That's why, because they have nowhere else to go aside from an institution or an industry where they will directly cause harm to other people. It's gonna, it's so fucked. It's looking so fucked. And this is why I think that the, you know, a lot of things will have to change in, in America because I feel like temporary solutions, um, like temporary solutions is unlimiting um, net mass immigration. I think this is a temporary solution, but other problems will have to be immediately addressed within such as well. The breakdown of the civic family and the civic group of society that produces more people into the economy out of trust, the um, mass inflation of just turns through everything, so people who even try to break away from this cannot even have this. Even people who are socially conservative cannot even really see themselves having a family, even if they find the one and that seems harder and harder to get because they're still stuck in their parents' home or they're still stuck in a small area that's not primed to like raise a child. BlackRock and a private equity is buying up everything and there's private equity flooding everything, but it's not for you. It's only for people who work in, you know, certain industries such as BlackRock. So it's, uh, you know, it's certain things, but they are breeding the, I in, uh, the intelligence out of the population. The only correlation with intelligence and fertility rate is that if you are not intelligent, if you are intelligent and you are incredibly religious, which if you look into the statistics alone, is actually less like uh, is actually far less likely. Uh, but that's because of a many many different reasons. Um, but I won't. That will take far too long to explain why that's the case. Um, those people are far more likely to have um, relations that have more kids. However, if you are not religious, which is the grand majority of people who fall above the range of two to three deviations in terms of IQ, they are so sterile, it's like the only word that can describe them is incels, which is the birth control and lands as well. Um, well, there's probably a few people in my chat land as well, to be honest. Um, that's beside the point. So, you know, things for the birth control is looking very unfortunately grim in terms of the entirety of America as well. However, you know, I will still be joking and laughing as well. So, you know, don't go to Greenland, don't kill yourself yet. We will be going through this entire thing together. And I think, I, you know, I have, some, I have some interesting solutions, I guess, that I want to try out. I think are pretty interesting as well. But, um, you know, uh, what do you think of this, uh, news, I guess? <laughs> it's fucking, uh... It's a lot to comment on, Tyrone. I can't, I can't come up with something. Right okay, now. I was just trying. To, I was just trying to do like a segue or whatever. It's like here's the niece opinion, I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You, you, you go, you go on some long tirades, and they're really hard to follow up. Sometimes okay. genocide. <laughs> I don't think genocide is the answer. I don't think that's. A good, I don't even think that's a good. I don't think that's a good answer. Um, Mr. Field, that's a, fu that's a funny answer though, but it's not a good one. Um. This is pretty funny. Uh, Chicago mayor warns that if local Walmart locations close, people will have fewer places to shoplift. <laughs> <laughs> and she. So essentially, this is bad news for Flavio. Right? Oh, yeah, it's Babylon B. Okay. Yeah, this is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. Pretty funny fucking. Pretty funny Babylon B article. But it was based on a real thing right here. A real Business Insider article right here. Um, where it was actually like. Um, you know, a lot of things shutting down, basically. Actual Walmart shutting down. So the first part of that headline was correct, and Batman B quotes with this. And the reason I said that is because it's pretty funny. But, um... They are closing a lot of the Chicago-based stores. They haven't been profitable in around 17 years. Um, and the most interesting detail is, in terms of losses, have doubled in the last five years. Or the George, George Floyd years, I guess. Um, it's pretty sad because, um, you know, bad news for Flavio, bad news for, like, um, a lot of, like, 
institutions of buying stuff in person, which I think are very important to obtain. Because Wait, it's just were like... Say, were you saying there that Flavio's in Chicago there? Yeah, he's in Chicago. Oh. That's I not Dox, he said that before. I don't know that. No, he said that before. <laughs> he, he, he made jokes about that before. Um... That's not Dox, he said, Flavio said that before. Flavio's bait. I don't care if I don't I haven't heard from Flavio in a while. He's been... He's I gotta, been yeah, I gotta ask while. Flavio. Put a one chat if you want me to get Flavio back on my fucking stream. That might be a reunion. Father, son, reunion. <laughs> uh, that's a joke. <laughs> um, but we get, we you know, we go for a, uh, for fucking Walmart. A Walmart, the Fire Emblem character. There's a, there's a Fire Emblem character that was translated as Walmart. So he was a big meme. This guy in big red armor called Walmart. Who? Um, guy who's in old a few old clips on my channel on YouTube. Um, you know, one one really notable appearance is the one where you, he gave the "What if you ate breakfast this morning?" to Ivy Four, Four, and Ivy Four was, four was like, "Yeah, that was great. That was a good stream. <laughs> that was when we all played Left 4 Dead too." And the funny thing about um, <laughs> this this is because I think stuff like this are pretty important to obtain because. A lot of people who are just going through certain ages and they just need somewhere to work. They just need somewhere to just get money. Just stuff like this is just not going to be the case anymore. So there's no social mobility and just people are going to just be not have a perspective of earning money until they're much older than they actually are. Like this is like the greater context of what moves like this actually indicate. You know what I mean? Where it's just like um like people say all the time where it's like, oh yeah, people eighteen years now are just like kids or whatever the fuck. Where it's just like well, all their institutions to make money are like destroyed. Everything costs too much. Of course, they're just going to be still living with her at home. The entire social mobility is is fractured in such an abysmal way that there is no mobility anymore. There is just stagnation. We are living in an era of post decadence. So it has to be destroyed before it gets better once again. And yes, I am repeating that because once again, it is, you know, it is a Nietzsche perspective. Um, this is some funny audio right here. Um, for example, you know, how many black communities are in a situation where they're, they come from a circumstance where they're in difficult, where they have difficulty, where the families are in real trouble? Okay, so he's, you know, he's talking about, you know, how a lot of black people in America, you know, they come from, like, rough backgrounds, and a lot of these people don't have, um, you know, this is Joe Biden saying a lot of people, you know, they may not have the best kind of upbringing in certain, you know, in certain bad neighborhoods, black people. Listen to the example that he says. I listened to this, and I was like, what the fuck, this is, like, so ridiculous. Where you have people who, you know, how many, even, even those families that are really poor don't have any books in the house, the kids. Don't have any books in the house? <laughs> you know, the books in the house, like, that's the priority. That's that's what that's what turns, like, a poor family to the rich family. Books well, in the house. Well, that was, like, important back whenever he was younger. <laughs> <so, you know? laughs> they don't have any books in the house? It's just like... Joe Biden, you do not n understand what is going on in these houses that is keeping them poor. It is definitely not the fact that they don't have books in the house, you know what I mean? It's the fact that half the family has gone to permanently get some books away from the house. And it's not books, they're doing drugs. Um, not even a yellow book. <laughs> it's just the strangest thing. You don't hear thing. a whole lot of conversation. She, man, I don't know about the great Gatsby and she. <laughs> Okay, talking about prank videos, Vitaly made his boxing debut. Now I'm pretty fond of boxing. I know what about boxing. So I saw this, news, and I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to become part of that trans 41% statistic. This okay. is uh, one of the worst boxing displays I may have ever seen. This is absolutely dreadful. Um, uh, this is this is so shit. Dude. Look at oh, that. It is misfit boxing, so it makes sense now. Yeah, this is yeah, but it's Vitaly. I, he looks like a. I mean, he. I mean, very common looks Eastern European, but he's just perpetually out of shape. He's like waddling back and forward, and he's not even extending any punches right here. Like I hate people who can't box. Look, look at this shit. Look at this shit. He's got his like chin up in the air. Like it. Do, he just doesn't care. This is the worst <laughs> place. This is the worst position. This isn't worse than Andy Worski. This is the worst place you can possibly put your chin when you're throwing a punch. Because if anyone such as taps your chin right here, there is more nerve endings in your chin than anywhere else in the entire body. What does that mean? It means that when you're 
moving even slightly forward, if you're just jabbed in the chin, the entire building of Vitaly would fall down. This guy doesn't know it either though, because his opponent is somehow worse it's than Vitaly, gone. and Vitaly ends up actually beating this guy. Look at this fucking windmill punch, look at this shit. Look at this shit. It looks like they're fighting in slow motion, look at that fucking Freeze. Donkey Kong punch. Holding his breath in, he's... He's just kind of running. <laughs> <laughs> look at this shit. Look at this shit. Look. He's just kind of running. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, his face made like ghosts. <laughs> I, I like how his face moved more just from flinching from a punch coming than he actually did from being hit by a punch. So he just goes here. He just does the old fashioned. I'm just going to lose my balance and punch you in the cock right here. This is the Vitaly good old, good old like, you know, Oh, Vitaly was famous for being in cock porn, you know, so I just got to punch you in the cock right here, yeah, right there. <laughs> no one gives a <laughs> shit. <laughs> I got to take out the baby maker. Time to start could be the right Professional play. boxing, everybody. So Vitaly here, he should, look at this, is fighting in slow motion. By the way, none of you know how to fight a, a basic punch, right? Because how you have a basic punch is um, you, you put yourself forward in a way, but you're on the balls of your feet, you try to twist your entire body, so it's all in one perfect motion. He is taking so long to throw not even a well-executed punch. He is like, he's like punch, putting his arm forward, not even in like a fighting motion, not even any intent to harm him. He's, it's like he's putting, it's like he's fucking playing Wii boxing, like that's what he's doing. And he does this, and he's immediately out of breath, his body <laughs> completely right shakes, hand. and he's walking like this, <laughs> and he's just like, and the worst part about this is the crowd that's like ooing and ahhing at any like slight jab. He may have winded him quite a bit as well. The guys who have to comment on this, he may have winded him quite a bit. Shut the fuck up. You, you <laughs> fucking. <laughs> right, if, this is the, if this is the competition you have to deal with at Misfits Boxing, could you compete? <laughs> yes, of course. Are you kidding me? Yes, I could probably beat most of the Misfit Boxers, unironically. Nice, I have done like boxing for like seven years. I am not gonna. <laughs> I'm like very seasoned on this. You know, that's you got. You gotta get in contact with Keemstar. Get get Tyrone in on the next Misfits card. <laughs> no, I. I gotta be honest. It's like probably. Even when I saw Jake Paul, I gotta be honest. I could probably beat Jake Paul, but that's like a different thing because that would never even happen to begin with. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. It never even happened. There's no reason to not even do it. Jake I mean, Paul. It's not unrealistic that you could get on a card if Keemstar get, became interested, because he's gotten like like low sub people before. Yeah, but there's no reason to like go. I, I'll never be able to fight someone like noteworthy. I'm not saying that you have to do it. I was more saying it as a joke. Yeah. Um. I don't know if. Okay. I've never had a pro. I've not got a pro boxing license because um I started in you know, basically in school basically ages ago. And um, when you do this, you do the amateur circuit. And I did this in school, and then I did, went in university as well. And when you do this, you get trained for free because you get put on a team for this university itself, or for this, right. well, not for a school, but when you're in university, you get put on the team university. And if you're good enough in this, you get put on the Olympic team. I didn't get put on the Olympic team, obviously. But I was pretty good. I'm not like fucking around. I was pretty good. I could understand boxing at a pretty high level. Um, I think I'm pretty good. I'm not, you know, I'm not fucking. I'm not beating any actual, probably noteworthy professional, any real professional boxer that you can name that hasn't bought on a Misfits card. I probably couldn't beat. Um, maybe I could with a, a severe amount of training, but um, I just enjoy yeah, it. Really I enjoy the, I enjoy the practice. Right? I enjoy the discipline. I, I enjoy the entire thing. I enjoy being punched. I, and I enjoy hearing the shake of blood in my head. Even you know, just despite that, it's like a, you know, there's not many dynasty pursuits that appeal to me. But the one that I do in, nightly yeah, enjoy is the aspect of seeing someone in this context and just hitting them over and over again in a disciplined state. You have to be. Everything has to be perfect, and it's one on one. It's a true nature of competition in that sense. It's a true element of mind games, and I love it. Um, just, just hypothetically deep. speaking, it, let's say theoretically you were offered a spot on like a Misfits boxing card. Sure. You were offered that spot, uh, however much amount of money you think would be reasonable or whatever. Would you take that opportunity, or would you say? Depends who it's against. Depends who it's against. Okay. okay. Um, Right now, could be, the, could be the game plan. Won't because it's like they're gonna put if they're gonna put me against some random guy, no one gets like Sam Hyde fought against this guy called I Am Thompson. Who the fuck remembers yeah. anything that guy said? Exactly, I didn't even remember. I didn't even remember he fought I Am Thompson. 
Everyone remembers Sam Hyde after he fought boxing match, like, I'm coming to kill you! <laughs> Everyone remembers the beforehand where it's like, Oh lad, you have to grow up in Ireland. All the death of all lie. One of the candy cane jumpers comes out to Ireland instead. When I was down in Cork, I the a laddie growing up in Ireland. No one even knows where Sam Hyde made rhyme and it did like see it did like uh, Irish fucking like rhyming and stuff like that and it was pretty funny, but I, I enjoy it. And to make sure you know, I got to do something that not many people talked about. Forty nine years ago, to this exact date on the twenty fourth, twenty fourth of March, Muhammad Ali fought Chuck Nut Webner, and this is a fight that has six million views and it's been pointing on for about ten years now. So I'm going to explain some of this because this is one of my favorite boxing matches of all time. One of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time, Muhammad Ali. Um. Fought against Chuck Webner. Are you familiar with this fight, Niz? Uh, I'm familiar with only Muhammad Ali and not his specific fights. Okay. So, essentially, uh, I've talked of a few fights specifically of people who I thought are absolute legends. People like the Jack Dempsey versus Jack Jess Willard. I think a humane feats and courage of the Dionysian pursuit, the discipline being fractured to perform something almost inhuman. And at this point, Muhammad Ali was viewed as already the greatest. He was a um, Olympic gold medalist. He had came back after the feats of Ken Norton and Joe Frazier and continued on. He was viewed as completely unstoppable. He had just beaten um, Foreman in the Rumble with the Jungle. He was viewed as the best of all time. And um, this was Ali's bout after reclaiming the heavyweight championship from George Foreman, and realistically, the fighting odds were ten to one in the favor of Ali. So it seemed like an easy win for Ali, right? Who did like minimal training for it, um, and when you preach for it, Ali. Ascent, um, and, or, and this is look what happened basically. This is Chuck Webner on the right, and this is Muhammad Ali on the left. It's the right hand that you're going to have to watch out for. Ali unloads that on top of that cut. So essentially, Muhammad Ali is on the back foot here, and he's trying to push forward with a jab. He's trying to jab Webner's face because throughout this entire fight, um, he's just jabbing through um, Webner. Webner is what they would call a slugger, or, or more specifically, a slugger on the in on, on the inside. So he's falling around Muhammad Ali, who's an outboxer, who's currently on the back foot. This entire time, and he's circling around the arena just to basically punch away at, at Webner's chin, the most sensitive area, just to try and get him. Um, Webner, though, is having kind of a turtle guard over his face, and he's trying to counter punch every single time he does it. Um, such in Wayne as, for example, a Jake Lamota versus um, Sugar Ray Robinson. But, um, Chuck Webner was viewed as a dirty fighter. He was someone who was known to step on people's shoes. He was known to someone who would rabbit punch. Rabbit punch is an illegal technique where you punch at the back of the head. In round one, Muhammad Ali uh, is rabbit punched several times, which Muhammad Ali rabbit punches him again. And it's something that's like, you do, you're meant to get point deductions, but sometimes like, boxing is like so corrupt. Um, and now we bring here to the ninth round, where essentially this is what happened in the ninth round of the fight. So Webner is following him around, Muhammad Ali here is walking backwards, he gets him right in the chin, right here, so he's extending his jab, it looks like Webner's almost out, Muhammad Ali's playing it easy on the back foot, kind of autopilot, Webner is not even having a full guard up, so he, he, he tried a right jab here, Muhammad Ali completely dodged it. And he go, Muhammad Ali goes down to a body shot. This is one of the only four times in Muhammad Ali's career that he falls down on the canvas. This is one of the only four times he ever comes down on the canvas. And it came back to a completely unknown guy, Chuck Webner, on this day, 49 years ago. And um, essentially, this would be basically the fourth and final time Ali would be knocked down in a professional fight. And um, basically, Ali would like be really salty about this, and he claimed that fucking Webner had like pushed him. Um, he had like um, pushed him after he fucking like stood on his foot. But essentially, um, people tried to like vindicate this claim. However. Um, and some photos like view the thing where he stepped on his foot. However, Webner maintains it was a genuine knockdown. And um, after this happened, this is this is like uh, this is like pretty fucking amazing. So after winning this, Ali goes down. The entire crowd screams. 
Wepner is going. Pretty hype at the time. Yeah, Wepner goes around and he goes. He sprints to the opposite side. And do you know what happens here? Um, Wepner goes. Uh, Wepner goes to his corner and told his manager, "Start the car up, Al. We go into. We go into the bank. We're millionaires." Where the manager upon told a Wepner, "Wepner, you better turn around. Your guy's getting up, and he looks pissed off." Muhammad Ali has raised up to the canvas. Is that, is that you interpreting, or has that been stated that, that that's what That's what said. that's what Wepner said. Wepner wrote a biography, and that's what he said in his book. That's pretty fucking sick. <laughs> and uh, it was like a complete magic moment. And essentially, after this, after this round seven, Ali went to punish Wepner for the remaining five rounds, opening up such cuts on his face and causing his eyes to swell up like a Looney Tunes characters. Uh, the final round culminated with like a severe fierce sense of combinations that set Webner staggering around the ring um, like wholeheartedly. Let me watch Ready where the are, final right? round is. So here we have the final round. So this is the part he has been bullied by Muhammad Ali. It's like I ain't gonna let Webner fucking beat me here. Because only had... after the long haul, I'll say this, it's an hour long fight. Yeah, I mean, a lot of fights used to be pretty long. They used to be really impressive. And Ali said before it, said, like, I didn't even bother training for this fight. I didn't bother training for this, like, because it's like, it's like um, because when he asked, like, why didn't you not train harder for this fight? And um, he's had this, like, riddle where it's like, an old man asked by, a, was once asked by a young man, how is it you say so good in such fine condition at your advanced age? The old man said, is that the old energy of the youth is maintaining my life. That's why my career spanned 20 years. I didn't burn myself training for guys like Al Lewis, Jurgen Blinn, and Chuck Webner. That's what he said. So he's like, I don't bother training for guys like Chuck Webner. Um, and that's what Arnie said, and he got knocked down. So he's not gonna let it literally about have himself eat, uh, eat his words. And this fight, ultimately, in 1975, you may be wondering, what happened in 1975 around this time? The, the movie Rocky happened in 1976 about a small time boxer who got a fight at the champion and knocked him down and came pretty close. This fight inspired the movie Rocky. Of, um, oh, actually? Yeah, it did. It did. This is the That's fight that inspired sick. Rocky. Um, That's because Chuck Webner was just an unnamed unnamed guy who just got a fight, just got a shot at Muhammad Ali who no one gave a shot, but was a able to be one of the four people who knocked him down in his entire career. I imagine Muhammad Ali didn't like Rocky that much. <laughs> um, and look at this. So this is the final round. Ali is like bullying Wepner. His face is like completely swollen over at this point. Uh, Wepner is actually landing some blows though. He's completely exhausted. He gets like blasted. Look at this. Jab, two jabs right into the face. Right directly to the chin. Wepner is wobbling around. Um, He's like, he's like falling over right here. Ah Lee strikes him right here. It looks like he's about to fall over here. He looks punch drunk almost. The entire crowd is screaming. It's the last round in the entire fight. But all Wepner has to do here is he has to just hold on for another minute and a half. And if he's done it, he's lasted the rounds against Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali is trying to take him out. So he's punching him over and over again. He keeps clinching him over. Muhammad Ali is getting him down. Wepner is over. He gets punched in the Aww. chin and he falls down. And Wepner falls down. And can Wepner get up before he counters out? Five, six, seven. It's waved off. Wepner doesn't get up and Muhammad Ali is viewed the victor. That happened exactly 49 years ago to this day. I have to that watch it. This looks like such a fun fight to watch. Holy fuck. Yeah, there's so many great fights. Um, you know, I had to show you some a fight like this that was viewed like fucking 40, 49 years ago to this day because like to redeem us from fucking this. And this shit. is what we get now. Yeah, it's to <laughs> redeem us from this shit. Misfits boxing. Jack fucking Dempsey versus Jess Willard. I have shown this before, fight, right? Fight before. Because this is pretty funny, right? Before, back in the day, you used to have unlimited fights. And Jack Dempsey was an unnamed guy and fighting this guy. Jess Willard was- these are both heavyweights, right? But Jess Willard is six foot fucking eight. Jack Dempsey, nice. right around six foot. And Jess Willard had previously went 23 rounds with Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson was the guy who was the head of- um, he won the 
what Negro Boxing League, and this is in 1919 when they were finally unified, um, the year before, and Jess Willard was, went against Jack Johnson, and Jess Willard, the guy on the right, beat him after 23 rounds, which is two and a half hours in the sun, and by the way, this is when boxers would use the box multiple times a week. People would box multiple times a week, so he would box two and a half hours over and over again. And then this is Jack Dempsey, an unknown guy, looks like half his size, David vs Goliath. And look what happens here. This is why Jack Dempsey is one of my favorite boxers of all time. This is one of the most ferocious, most brutal boxers of all time, Toledo, Jack Ohio, Dempsey. 4th of July, 1919. Jack Dempsey, a sensational young tiger with amazing speed and two murderous hands. Jess Willard, the biggest man to hold the title under Marcus of Queensbury rules. Has yeah, this is the Marcus of Queensbury because basically the Queensbury rules were only in state at about this point for about 20 years because before Queensbury rules they never even used to use boxing gloves and stuff like this. And also for before the Queensbury rules, you could like grapple people as well. Um for example, you could grapple, you could hold onto people and just shove them around and you could punch people in and all sorts of things, but it had to be using the pugilism discipline, discipline of the hands. And ironically, um there was also but even though it was Queensbury rules, there was a bunch of rules now that aren't in fact like an able now, such as the fact that there's unlimited rounds, even now the fight only ends from a knockout. Like, this is a fucking rule that happened now, which is insane. People were just fucked around forever. And, um, additionally, instead of going back to the neutral corner after you knock someone down, you can just stand directly in front of them, and after they get back up, you can just punch them down again. I'm not making that up, that actually happened. And Jack Dempsey, so, so essentially, Jess Willard, Jack Dempsey here, Jess Willard on the right, and, and, so essentially, they come out here and look at this shit. This is like fucking terrifying. So Jack Dempsey is viewed as one of the very first boxers with modern boxing principles. So look at the way Jack Dempsey is moving and look at the way Jess Willard is moving. Jess Willard is moving with his hands down at his waist. Dempsey has his ha uh, completely hand guarded. He's moving on the balls of his feet, moving back and forward in a swaying mo motion. He's, he's dodging all of Willard's punches. Willard is like moving towards him, he's trying to clinch him over and over again, and you may be wondering, where does this entire thing go? Well, you look at this, and it's like... No, the little man won't get him! So, Jack Dempsey is trying to move his way in, and look at this. What Jack Dempsey does here, is while moving forward, he anchors- This is the forward way you move a punch, where you use using your back foot, you anchor it, you twist the back of your arm, you do it all in one forward motion, and Jack Dempsey, who's not real, even the real name of Jack- uh, That's not even his real name. He grew up on a farm, he was training with, like, little- He would walk with little sticks, this is how he'd train, and he would punch, but excruciatingly. But this is when the moment he did what was known- Now known as, like, the Dempsey roll, right here. He would sway his body right to left using the centrifugal force of his body. So essentially, he would propel himself using gravity left and right, using the mass of gravity to power up um, weight essentially, and not just use the mass of a punch, exercising it, if that makes sense. And this is what he did here to Jess Willard. Left, right, left, right, accentually all into the chin. Willard goes down. However, you may be wondering, the fight doesn't end here. Willard gets back up, he gets punched in the face again, and he goes down again. Willard ends up going down 13 times this entire fight. Willard doesn't go out like a hero, doesn't go out like a fucking villain though, because Willard, though, he goes down, Jack Dempsey can just stand right in front of him, and Willard gets back up to his feet once again. Jack Dempsey, as he's, as well, Willard is climbing up, Jack Dempsey, Jack Dempsey can just punch him in the face and he falls down again. And because Jack Dempsey doesn't have to go back to the neutral corner, Willard gets climbed up once again. He just gets punched in the face again. And Willard goes down 13 times in this fucking fight. And this is what starts the Jack Dempsey era. You may have wondered, in, in certain sports like baseball, um, when they um, unified the Negro League and the actual other league, that was the World Championship at the time, you thought like all these black people took over. Jack Dempsey dominated the entire 20s of boxing because he was the first guy to have modern boxing principles um, that would actually apply. Um, there's an old book by Jack Dempsey which is like how to throw a boxing punch. You can read it online right now through archive.org and it's a guy that still works right now. Um, Jack Dempsey is like, he's a fucking legend. Jack Dempsey um, training, he's a fucking great guy. Um, you can, you can, wait, uh, before fight of the century, this is against uh, Georges Carpentier, who is um, a French guy, one of the most legendary French boxers, other than Marcel Sedan, who's my favorite French boxer of all time. He fought 167 pounds and fought against like the, some of the great um, super middleweights of all time. But this is like colorized footage of Jack Dempsey in 19, uh, 1920, I believe. <laughs>
training. This is after the Just World fight. And this is how he would train. He would just run with certain people because he was six foot. He was taller than a lot of people back then. But he wasn't obviously six foot fucking eight. And he would just run with a lot of fucking wooden sticks. This is how he trained. I'm 21, rather, sorry. Yeah, Jack Dempsey versus George A. Carpentier. So he would just run every single day. He would just run 10 kilometers every single day with wooden sticks. And every kilometer, he would stop and do um, and do drills. What would these drills be? Well, it would be drills of like, for example, this. He would practice certain boxing moves where he would do this. He would do a thing where he'd also walk backwards <laughs> because it's very important in boxing to know how to move backwards very fast. So he would do this. He'd punch, he'd punch, go down. You know, Dempsey roll down. Okay, so you punch, you use this. I know, side left, okay, punch left, right, down, okay, and then he'll just go around in a circle, do the same thing again, and then he'll just continue walking again. But this is like the first guy to have modern boxing pro tools right here, Jack Dempsey. So he'll go down, but left, but that's a fucking knockout blow right there, using all the central power force of the body, right here. This is what he, this is what he landed on Jess Willard, this, and then he did the same thing with the other half of his body, over and over again, using gravity to repel himself. Do, 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 do. The discipline, because truthfully, at its highest level, boxing is the hardest thing to truly maintain at its highest level because it requires the absurd amount of endurance that um, it's the most athletic sport to compete in the highest form of level, which is why it's so impressive. Jack Dempsey right here, punching a boxing bag, a fucking 1921's boxing bag. This is just him punching a fucking boxing bag, 1921, Jack Dempsey. And there's also footage, like, um, for example, the legend, one of the legends of boxing, um, Rocky Marciano, would fight, which was another inspiration of Rocky Balboa, but mainly just the name, that's really it. Boxing style was not from Marciano whatsoever, Marciano is more of a slugger, um, inside fighter. But, um, he would fight with a 300 pound heavy bag instead of the standard 200 pound a day. Jack Dempsey would also fight with a 300 pound heavy bag. And a lot of this stuff as well, you may be wondering, like, Jack Dempsey's physique, why does it look like this? Why does he have big bulging pectoral muscles or whatever? Well, because he didn't do, um, bench pressing. He didn't do anything like this. So the so what people call stuff like this is Bronze Age lifting, where you just had, like, big, big dumbbells and barbells that he just lifted while standing. He didn't do any lifts while lying down, which a lot of people do nowadays for strength testing. However, the best thing for strength testing is vertical strikes, um, vertical strikes down, which strains, um, which trains the deltoids and the trapezoids in the shoulders and, and the back, which generates power the most. So he doesn't have like big bodybuilder pectoral muscles, which like people like the rock have for some reason, but those things don't actually have, um, don't generate, um, what's it called? They don't generate any power. They're just for aesthetics, which I think just look gay. If you have muscles for aesthetics, it's gay. It's not for power, you know what I mean? It's just gay. It's gay. All the gay lads at the bodybuilding competition. Yeah, and that's why, like, some people say Jack Dempsey looks really skinny or whatever. It's like, no, he's ripped. He just doesn't have, like, big pectorals. Like, he's trained everything else. Like, even though he's six foot, he's, like, 215, 220 pounds, so... Like, look at his fucking back. His back's fucking, like, completely drizzled. It's just the front of him, because now people's, like, perception of masculinity, they have some, like, bullshit- they have bullshit standards of masculinity, where you have to have big, bulbous pectoral muscles that don't do fucking anything, that only increase your rate of heart disease and stuff like this. Yeah, it's like he said, he's ripped. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, Tennessee Frisky. I remember this story, I guess? It was, uh, intermission- boxing intermission, wasn't that? Okay. Um... Wait, is this the the woman that like fucked everybody in her like fucking uh the police academy or whatever? Uh the police department, really? Uh um Kiku, if you're still here, can you send me a screenshot of what you sent me? And not just a link, because I don't want to open this link on stream. I wanna see what it is first. Cause if I sh open this on stream, it will show me immediately. Okay, let me do this. Du -du 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 -du. Yeah, you gotta send me a screenshot, Kiku, otherwise it's not gonna work. Okay, yep, yeah, this woman right here, this, this woman is pretty fucking funny, um, this is the woman who, um, fucking, um, what's her name, fucking, uh, Megan Hall, that's her. I was trying to remember it. But look at the image that some people put on here. It's a guy, a fucking pronouns guy, uh, John Swan. <laughs> 
All right. Officer, <laughs> Officer Harold reporting for duty. Officer <laughs> Tempestan. <laughs> Officer Shit. Um, what do you think of this image and the fact that the dog was included there? That's amazing. Dog. Okay, great. Um, it's the biggest red flag you could ever see. Well, I guess <laughs> it, it was by default. She is a white woman, after all. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and um, her whole thing, though, was the fact that Megan Hall claims that she was sexually groomed by the male police officers and sued the city of Ravern. Um, Hall allegedly hooked up with multiple colleagues, performed oral sex on um, two officers on the job, and a threesome with an officer and his wife. She's married at this time, by the way, and the and the guy, if you remember, I think I remember covering this, he's like a complete cock and forgave her immediately. He, he didn't even have like an argument, he just completely forgave her. It's like, uh, we had problems in our relationship. It's like, it makes it seem like he did stuff as well, but it's like, I, I, you don't have kids or anything, it just completely, I don't know, I don't I understand the plot. Uh, the birth control cannot compute, okay. But who blamed? the sexual actions on, I guess this, her troubled marriage and the police department in <laughs> itself being a sexist institution. So for example, she claims that she wasn't looked at as a rookie cop to be trained and promoted. She was looked at as a piece of meat to be sexualized and exploited. This is after, for example, she's engaging in acts to like, um, publicly with other officers as well that are like, Maybe is known. Maybe they see that way if you weren't such a hoe. <laughs> so, there is like, a certain pe a group of people that sided with her after a certain thing, but it's like, they refuse to just acknowledge the past actions that she has just contributed publicly. Because once again, it's just like, a lot of women who side with people like this, it's just like, you have to ignore the past behavior, because once again, what we've known from past behavior, it's the same thing as history. The past behavior is the best indicator of future behavior. Um, unless something drastically changes changes and all that has changed here is that she is now a victim because she's been arrested um so essentially um there was like an agreement to sign a settlement between essentially um the existing city and the police officer of megan hall herself and um if you read this she will get a 500k payday after claiming she was groomed by the police um which includes courts costs attorney fees and expenses um, so that's great, isn't it? Fantastic. It's great. It's great. The white, the white woman wins again. We got, we got to step up our game, men. It's not even child support anymore. It's just like everything. It's just like everything can just be stolen. You just do not have anything, and we'll be funny. Um, and yeah, well, I, you know what I have? I don't have anything, and I'm not happy. Um, oh yes, this is something I did a thread on on Twitter. I can't play this because it's from The Vicar Man, one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, this movie right here is great. It's, um, it's you know, and right here there seems to be the officer right here. And he walks almost like Idubs here, looking through the window of his wife, or whatever the fuck. It's like, hmm, uh, I hope she's having fun in there. Um, but this movie is very beloved and close to my heart, The Vicar Man. And, um... People were saying here, we're going to have to do this discourse that when people who claim to be socially progressive will argue that sex, uh, sexual education is a form of grooming, it has already started. So this is like, a, you know, it's a straw man, and it's also by people who are the media literacy crowd. This person is also part of the media literacy brigade. He's a media literacy brigade at Nice. Would you believe that? Because he has his take of all anti-sexual education weirdos just remind me of the cop from the Vicar Man, and he posts a clip of the Vicar Man. The only problem is, is that he posted the probably worst example he could do for this kind of situation. Because I said here, The Wicker Man, 1973, is one of my favorite films of all time. But I see the takes like this, but from the usual suspects, the media literacy crowd, you choose the worst possible examples for this statement. It's a movie about how a British Christian who is a police officer goes from his own free will to venture after a lost child of the island of Summer Isle. The island is being very idiosyncratic in nature, where the islands practice wicker paganism. He frequently opposes all the practices of the children who participate in sex rituals and pagan worship as heathen and blasphemous, and overtly demands why the children of Summer Isle have never heard of Jesus. How he ends up talking to the titular Lord Summer Isle, um, this is 
is Howie, uh, Sergeant Howie, he's the main character, um, right. and tells him that the Christian god is not worshipped on this island because the Christian god has failed to deliver the originals of Samurai from their miserable hand-to-mouth existence and their spiritual apathy. He tells him that the only way to appease gods is with a human sacrifice. Howie qualifies the right kind of sacrifice on four counts. He has come to Samurai on his own free will, he has come with the power of a king and the man of war, he is a virgin and he would be the fool for the day in their May Day celebration. I suggest everyone to watch it, and if you are interested in watching it, the birth control will slide you a link to watch it. Is anyone in chat as well? I am very much fond of this movie. Of course, the news of an impending date with the Wicker Man does not set well with Sergeant Howie. As a Christian, Howie does believes that sacrificing him's sake for the for the summer old crop is not only futile, it's murder. And this is Summer Isle played by um, Christopher Lee. We don't commit murder up here. We're a deeply religious people. Obviously, Sergeant Howie and the people of Summerall are stuck in the midst of an ethical dilemma. The people of Summerall believe that their gods dictate the sacrifice of Howie, while Howie believes that his sacrifice is murder and moral and unjustified. The people of Summerall can also use a loose interpretation of Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative to permit Howie's human sacrifice. The Summerallanders will have no problem universing their maxim if killing a person will save their community and gods require a human sacrifice that is morally permissible permissible to sacrifice a human. Sacrificing human may be permitted by Immanuel Kant's first formulation by the categorical imperative. However, they may run into the problem with the second formation of the categorical imperative, using people as a mere means on the grounds of that Sergeant Howie is not a willing sacrifice. And this is and this interpretation is predicated on the expen expected consequences, which makes it kind of utilitarian. I was certain there, Immanuel Kant, the inadvertent, uh, uh, inadvertent creator of utilitarian ethics, even though he is more of a deontolo uh, deontological one, because he was talking about deonto deontological perspectives, and he was relating it to utilitarianism. And that is where a lot of utilitarian comes from, a guy who is critical even in its initial inception, which is why I... Um, for example, talking about the Age of Consent on my Warhammer Vermintide stream, I was talking about a deontological perspective on certain things, such as consent is not not necessary, but mandatory. Um, and if that is viewed in a utilitarian perspective, then you will have people recording themselves being the exception, which I feel like this can be justified in horrible ways, especially when everything is the exception now, due to people being victims. However, and I just did a TLDR here, Howie is the fool for the day for the main reason of his own free will perceived, um, perceived a state that worships mutual spiritual pity could be saved by his own intervention. That fool in this context is closer to Nietzsche than a pagan one. So the answer is Summerall must cease to exist. So the, the answer for the movie is not that um, Howie must acknowledge this civilization and hold hands and be multicultural and accept these people who sacrifice children and do this pagan worship. No, the point of this should be Howie should leave immediately and try to exterminate it. But Howie, his use of pity and charity is taken advantage of because he believes these Summer Islanders can be saved. Which they can't. These people cannot be saved. They have, they have engaged in such ritualistic murder. They have begun and they have they have begrudged this right and this privilege of being saved they, they have lost this right um welcome everybody to a new episode you may be wondering <laughs> you may be wondering why the fuck am i talking about something like emmanuel kant so the why the fuck am i talking about emmanuel kant and then go to bad with production it's like okay turn there is like a, there is a vague depth of you know i'm not to be pretentious here but there is a vague depth of people who are interested in certain things you know there is a um there is a, you know, uh, you know, there's a vague, there's a vague, uh, what, what, you, what you call, um, gap. Uh, there is a wide margin that is as big as the abyss between Emmanuel Kant and Bad Wit Productions. Not being said that- that the porn profile picture in the bottom right? Uh, Echo Strategy. Oh, of course. That yes. That makes sense, actually. So essentially, on this stream, um, Megadeth comes on here, and, um, let's see if I can get some audio. Having said, you know, both control, you know, I do enjoy some lowbrow content from time to time. I know, I enjoy, I enjoy everything. I, I, I do not, I don't stand any moral platitude. I enjoy everything. It doesn't matter, you know. 
I enjoy everything. I can, I'm a consumer of everything. I enjoy everything. It doesn't matter what the fuck it is. If, as long as there's something to get out of something and it's not going to drive me insane, I enjoy it. It would be right for him to like transfer to like, especially considering like the group they have. No. Anything to do with it, so. Okay, this is Maggot the Whore edits right here. Um, you know, the person we talked about last stream, the person, the single mother, the person, um, you know, the person who has made consistent or wrong choices. And, um, she throughout this was just coping and, um, very frustrated about the overall commentary community going after her. She made, like, um, comments towards, like, Tommy C. Matt Piss and Nicholas DiOrio. And there was a point in particular where she was saying it was wrong for Tommy C. to bring up what happened with D. Max and Lolcat live and that Matt Pitt should have been the knight in shining armor and defended D Max. That was like a ah. real thing that um Maggot Edit said. Because Maggot Edit's interpretation of the commentary community is one that validates itself, which would never truly be the case. I am sorry, it's like I call a whore whore, a spade a spade, it's the same thing to me. And no one must be validated. They must all be destroyed. And as everything in the derivative melting pot lasts, it will all be done. like out of any like genre in online communities is probably the most self-critical genre there is out of all the ones I've seen. Because it's easy! It's easy. And it's like, as long as there's a Reveter in the world, everyone's being funded to do their own live streams talking in front of an OBS fucking microphone. But the thing is, most people don't have much worthwhile things to say. I try to put a show together every week, but I think I at least have some things worthwhile to say. Maybe on philosophy or some shit, I don't fucking know. But um... There's some people whose perspective and you know, grasp on the world is so obviously low and are just so spiteful and addictive. I don't understand why anyone would listen to and validate. But then there becomes a eureka moment. Archimedes in his bathtub. And the light bulb goes off, Nice. Do you know what the light bulb is? Aha. She's a woman. It, none of these things matter. <laughs> none of these things I just said matter. I'm being serious. She's a woman. Know, so She's a woman. <laughs> None of these things matter. You can be the <laughs> lowest of the low woman. You can have. You can be Sonic the Hedgehog. You can be a porcupine. You can be an actual hedgehog with heroin needles inside of yourself, with all your head shaved off. But as long as you have a pussy and a set of boobs. There will be an echo of tragedy or equivalent to simp around you in a self-harming nature to drag yourself down to that person's level. It doesn't matter, because in the end... Like the pussy power. <laughs> it doesn't matter in the end, because in the end it's just like, there will always be some guy who orbits you. Um, okay. What do you think of this meme, Raham? Wow, a fantasy RPG with dozens of races. Race, human, white, sex, male, chorus. Night with Longshot, time to game. What do you think of this? <laughs> Based. <laughs> you know, I don't normally play as this, uh, but I know a lot of people who do. In Mountain Blade, in Mountain B Blade for example, I usually play as the Rodox, which, uh, you know, the Based Rhodesians! Um, which, I don't know. They're, they're based on the glory days. I usually, you know, I, I, um, there's a lot of people who agree with this sentiment, but maybe because, like, uh, I don't really see and identify a culture that really exists, and, like, I can say, like, oh, yeah, this is definitely my culture or whatever the fuck. Actually, the only thing that's wrong here is probably class knight with longsword. I think that's pretty varied. Okay. I think class is very varied. Yes, but I personally do not, you know, I am not in, you know, I don't see myself as such, so I don't really create myself as that. And also, I don't usually just create myself in a video game. I usually create like a fucking cool guy, not myself. Um, and it's, I'd say it, most it, of the time, I just kind of go with whatever the default is. And usually, like messing around with the character. Editing. No, I like you messing around. I like make, making someone weirdly creative, but it looks fucked up. Um, but not like fucked up or like weirdly fucked up. I like making something really fucked up. But um, yeah, a lot of people have stuff like this because you know it is the default though. This is the people's default, which you know. And the reason I'm saying this, Nice, why did I put this up here? Why, why am I even having this conversation about something that should be so, you know, minimal? Before the fixes, essentially right here, this is, was all in, in fucking, um, the Bol new Baldur's Gate game. They did this yeah. thing where they calculated the most picked options in the character creation menu, and it was this. Huh. 
Baldur's Gate Three, for reference. You don't you don't even have to play as like a human. You can play as like a big orc with devil horns. You can play as a monster and mutant. And the most picked option was some guy who probably looked like the average person who was playing the game. I mean, it just makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense that people probably want to play as themselves in an RPG game where they can make decisions as a character. Um, look, it's look at this. We took the most popular choices and recreated this. Fortunately, it wasn't working. And it's like very close to the default. It's something that aren't the default. And it's pretty funny because a lot of games have stuff like this. Even the Street Fighter games, the default character in the character writer in the new Street Fighter games is he's default black. But apparently most people play as like a default white looking guy. Like all they do in the character creation is just change the color guy's skin from black to white to ma match them. It's pretty funny if you ask me. <laughs> I, and so people just identify, just like, oh, that's not me. Ah, uh, that's me. It just changes the co color from like black to like white. So, oh, that's me now. Um, even though, I don't know, I just try to create someone usually pretty fucked up. Uh, look, um, I'm not that kind of guy though who does those like Fallout videos where it's like, oh, my guy was a fucking dentist before the war, so he can only use like the fucking um, syringe in like Fallout 4, you know? Start like that. In, in this in this game, I'd say it actually is kind of fun to play as other races, just because it actually does like affect the gameplay and relationships with characters. Hmm, needs to notice that uh, other races affected in gameplay. <laughs> 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 what does the black race have? Ability to steal more? Fucking bicycle provided from thing. It doesn't say who it's from. Just steal it. <laughs> 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 Nice the noticer is about to explain the racial differences um, in gameplay. <laughs> okay, uh, let's forward her. We have to we have to save their women. We have to save their men. <laughs> what do you think of this? <laughs> <laughs> let's be real. The, the the right side of this picture doesn't care <laughs> if these men get saved. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I I know this is made by a guy. He's probably into this kind of stuff as well. That that's my prediction. Because this guy is like um. People don't draw characters like this. I don't know oddly specific. I mean, he looks me compound. He's got like, the orgy RFC arms. I like how it's like these guys' arms look normal, and he just has like the worst arms possible. Like, not only well, is I think, he... I think the goal is to make this man, like, as disheveled as possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny, though. Um, okay. Oh, have you seen this? It's pretty funny. This is a story fucking, um... Adrian Gale might, might be, um... Might be, might be, might, might find funny. But this is, uh, someone born in North Korea, forced to work in a mine. They escape and they smuggle themselves into northwestern China. Her, off, her options are only to be a prostitute in a bar and or marry, like, a Chinese guy. And, um... So essentially, she's went through all this trauma, she's been fucked with, all this much, and her only options in life are to become a prostitute or marry some random guy, right? And, um, her things, it's like, but on reaching her side, she and her friend were put into cars and driven northwestern China, where they were given a choice, she said, entertain the customers at the bar or marry a Chinese man. I think the obvious one is to get the green card or whatever the fuck, but who knows, maybe my mind doesn't work like a woman's mind. Um, that's a joke. Um, I wanted her to cry, but I knew nothing could change, even though I did. She said, speaking to a Korean, I thought I couldn't work with a bar, so I'm my own one. Marrying a Chinese man? That's said in such disdain, you think, like, niece, what option do you think she's going to put on, if you say it in such? She's gonna be a prostitute. Let's go. Shortly afterwards, she ra she was separated from her friend. She would never see Everyone her again. Turn, and introduced <laughs> to the man who had brought her, a Chinese farmer, eight years senior. I didn't like the man because he was straught. So after working in the coal mines, being forced to be a prostitute, your decision is you're going to skip all this life of servitude to marry a guy, and your choice is no, he's too short. Brutal white pill right here. Um, brutal okay, white my pill. Five seven brothers and sisters. She don't. She don't know what good men are. <laughs> <laughs> it's so over. It's so over. Um, it's so over. Height fucking selves right there. Oh no. Adrian Gale was gonna say this story never happened because he's five foot seven as well and he's like, hey, hey. nah, it's never happened. <laughs> 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 it's never been I'm, pr I'm proud of my shortness and I, you know, <laughs> you know, 
one thing about short people, you know, we stick together. At least short men, not so much short women. Oh yeah, um, a short woman is like a valuable resource. Short men are like discarded, like fucking, like fucking. Look at look at Danny DeVito, and like you know, it's like oh yeah, I had no problems, and it's like he, he's like. Dude, I love fucking Danny DeVito. He's great. He's great, but it's like he, there's instances where people talk about because he's four foot eleven. And he talks about how small he actually is. Sometimes it's like, it, does being short actually impact your career? It's like, no, but he's like been a, an actor for like forever. So it's like, you know, he's not really existed inside this normal paradigm yeah. side of it. Where it's like, he's ca he's always cast as like some disheveled Jewish guy with a big hat that's like half the size of him. Or like um, the penguin. I mean, I mainly like him for his work in Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, he's great. He's great. I, I, I'm not like, I'm not like shitting on fucking Danny Tomito. I think he's great. But like, um, it's always like a guy like Danny DeVito or like Warwick Davis or one of these like short actors who goes like, you know, I don't think there's anything different about being short than tall. It's like, you know, it's just like this years of cope that's probably had to become. And to and to this woman's mind, it doesn't matter if you're Danny DeVito. It doesn't matter if you're Warwick Davis. You're all this. If you're below five foot ten, you're all the same height. You're all too small for this fucking little bitch. Um, <laughs> I would rather get fucked by men on the daily. You know, now I think about it, she's probably getting short guys in the fucking prostitution lounge anyway. Probably, the Chinese. I mean, Ching Chong China ain't producing any tall giants, are they? Fucking... <laughs> Anyways. Okay, um... Okay, look at this, right? We are out here celebrating her 21st in a few days early. Got her hit Insta in a few days. Wish her happy birthday. What do you think of this image? <laughs> I don't know, it's just a picture of his girlfriend. What do you want me to say? A lot of people were saying, like, celebrating 25, it looks like a child or whatever. And a lot of people were trying to extend moral virtue and virtue signaling over this photo. I don't think there's anything wrong with this photo. I just think she looks like a version of her, of his ex-wife, but with Down syndrome. She has, like, frontal bossing on her head. She doesn't look like she has autism. There's, like, a lot of things no, wrong e with her. Every, every picture I see of her, her face always looks kind of sunken in. Yeah, it has like the fetal alcohol syndrome place, the actual phenotype, not the people, not the people who said that about Greta Thunberg, this is what actual fetal alcohol syndrome looks like. Um, is she a transformer? She. When a Freud oh, yeah, says way, something okay. so insulphobic, you give them the true, fel true self stare. This is what we do, this is what we do to this f fucking bitch right here. We give them the true self stare. Okay, okay. By the way, Tyrone, you were saying you were asking for a, a screenshot from Kiko. It turns out they were in Domino's stream for a little bit, so you can ask him again if you want. Oh, Kiko. Um, oh no, uh, Kiko DM'd me something. That's why. Kiko DM'd me, and it was like I deleted the whole thing, so that's why. Okay. No, I deleted the group. Okay, here we go. Aaron, um, Bush now. Are you surprised by this? <laughs> I'm not surprised even remotely. <laughs> that, um, like, you know, February 26th, when it occurred, pretty popular, the day after, even more popular somehow, immediate day afterwards, tanked to half the relevance, day after, even less, and then within a week, it's like nothing, and now, it's less than one, it's less than one, what does that mean? It means there's so little people uh, searching up Aaron Bushnell Turns out now. a lot of people do not care that much about freeing Palestine. Obviously. There's so many people who <laughs> have not searched this guy's name up um, as of recently. There's so little data. It's not even one anymore. It's not even a fraction of it what it, what it was before. It's, like, it's not even a hundredth. It's not even relative. It's nothing. It's literally like a thousandth. It's uh, nothing. It's bullshit. And it's like, how is this stuff being like... How Google indexes fucking websites is that whenever something is indexed on a website, it will index multiple pages. So to get something this low, this quick, no one has to be searching this guy's name. Which they aren't. No one cares about Aaron Bush now. Because his performative stunt of suicide, no one gave a shit for. And ironically, yes, claiming that a ceasefire could only exist through acts of violence, aka burning himself, just encourages a, a, a very ironic um, circular mental reasoning with the only thing that will stop death is more death. I don't think Aaron Bushnell thought that one through though, personally. Um, I don't know. Maybe his name will go up when they do the Darwin Awards or whatever the fuck. Who's Aaron Bushnell? Aaron Bushnell is the guy who lit himself on fire, um, self, um, you know, for Palestine and said free Palestine. 
Um, pretty big story. Uh, about a month ago. No one cares now, though. Um, and uh, the last story, I guess, we have of today. Not the fucking Oracle. Python coding pattern, day six. Best code will be reported. <laughs> pretty funny. Um, other than that, I guess we're done with the docket. So, uh, you want to post speedrunners, Sneeze? Sure, sure. Is that what you're waiting for? The speedrunners segment? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're two and a half hours in. We can do speedrunners. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's play speedrunners, okay. So if anyone also wants to join the stream, they're welcome to do so. Um, and welcome to join the stream. I mean, you know, the stream is a, a pretty fun place to be. You can be on the stream, you can ask any question you want to. You can be on the birth controller's channel, you can do anything you want to. Um, I don't know if you want to call in, you're welcome to do that. But we, me and Nisa are going to be playing a game as um, we talk about stuff that has happened during the week, I guess. Uh, I guess an old KTS stuff that used to be just me and Brad and what the fuck. Um, let's start with anyone, a brief saying let me cook. Dude wasn't me for a hot minute, but I didn't say anything about it anywhere. Say the n-word, I will not say that word. Talking about Mr. Fuels actually, I ended a video of Mr. Fuels came up in my recommended. Like he makes commentary videos and they're not that bad, he's pretty funny, he sounds like a kid. But he's pretty funny. Um... Yeah, I, I, I don't know how I found him, because it was just like, oh, I recognize that guy from my chat, so I clicked on his video. I was like, it's actually kind of funny. Um, surprised how funny it was. You, you should keep doing like, his videos, dude. Um, because the only way to grow on YouTube is by doing videos. As you can see here, if you just live stream forever, it's just the path to stagnation. Okay, uh, let's do speedrunners. Okay. I should always point down the stuff I want to ask, I forget one the spot. Yeah, you should, because I only do two streams a week, rather. Realistically, I guess I would talk about briefly about um future of the channel, I guess. Um What I mean by future of the channel is the fact that um probably we're going to be doing the last Warhammer Vermintide stream. And I might be doing there's a few funny moments from that, so I might actually be doing a um what I call fucking um uh, a highlight reel. Yeah, a highlight stream, because there's some funny George Floyd moments in that. Okay, let me let me get that off. There's some funny, like, Floyd moments in the, um... Oh. Okay, there's some funny, like, Floyd-esque moments in the Warhammer of the stream. So I might do that. And also, it's like, last epi next episode is probably going to be the last episode. So it's like, what the fuck do you want the next one to be? It's like, should I ask Mike the Bike and Nice to do a, um... Let's do a uh, custom match, I believe, right? Um... Were you gonna have us both, like, do the, uh... The what do you call it? Earthbound one? Yeah, that was, was the plan. Else? That was the plan. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna invite um, so anyone can join. I'm gonna invite Nice. Um. Right. Okay, and now I'm gonna go on online. Okay. So I invited Nice. Okay, there we go. Okay, the Fentanyl Warrior. Oh, this is speedrunners. Yes, Tyron, you should do an IRS room where you cook meth. I'd not do that, no. Um, I know how to do that, I just don't want to do that. Upbound when? Post more vids. We need QTS growth so that- So edit the streams down. I mean, the thing is, though... You're gonna think I'm retarded? The entire chat is gonna think I'm retarded? Of something that doesn't really warrant a claim. I wanna have a bunch of people watching me, but I don't wanna have... A big people. audience watching me. I would feel uncomfortable with a lot of people watching what I said. I, I don't know. I'm I'm glad that a lot of- I exist in a small realm where enough people watch me where I have, you know, a lot of things- I break a lot of stories, I have a lot of things that, you know, I, I do like this. But I don't want to exist in this paradigm where I have to be careful what I say, I have to be careful of all this, like, stuff. I don't- I don't want to exist like that. I think like that would be, like, an absolutely awful existence to live in. Um, I enjoy. And this is an awful place to be in something that can always grow. Where I am now. I mean, if I know, just based on YouTube channels, I mean, like, Nerdy John, for example, I know if you just post highlight reels, not highlight reels, just but if you do fucking videos of just your stream clips, I know it will grow your channel. I just don't want to do that currently. I know it will grow the channel, though. Um, if I ever do videos again, which I might, because I have a few things I think I might want, it'll be like, independent things, like I did before. You know? Alright. Um, so like size of Manic stream? I mean, Manic now is a bit too big, um, for my liking. 
Like, even when I did the Illuminati stuff, when I had, like, 100 live people in, I, I didn't like it. Um, I don't know. Maybe, like, double or triple the current numbers I get now, but it's, like, that would, would be what I would be like. But there's no way to really get that without getting more, because I would have to grow an audience that would always be capable of growing more. Am I retarded for growing? I remember, like, I heard Mr. Medica say this once, and I was like, um... I heard this opinion, and I never truly, I guess, understood it before I started streaming myself, and now I kind of get it. Um, it's the same thing as why I probably won't ever take money, um, ironically. Even if I'm, like, forced into the gutter, if I'm forced into, like, a Finney's bathtub cleaning situation, I will probably find a w better job, or find a better way to do it, or, you know, I will always be hopeful in this, or maybe, you know, the streams will be just less frequently and stuff like this. Um, I don't know, I, I feel bad for asking people for money. Maybe it's some, um, you know, ultimately superfluous and fruitless endeavor to kind of suggest that you should have a duty in terms of something that can always just produce donations that people want to have the ability to donate, should they, you're taking that away from them. But I just feel bad about taking the money. If that makes sense. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, can you go backward? Oh, you can. Yeah, you can. Also... Can anyone hear the audio on the game? Or is it too quiet or quiet? I don't fucking know. Um, cause in- wait, 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 no, 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 move. Um, okay, I'm going to add advanced audio properties, and we are going to add speedrunners to this. Okay, can someone tell me if this is too loud or too quiet, please? Uh, okay, no audio, okay. So there's audio now, can someone tell me if it's too loud or too quiet? No, I know there is audio now, it's an OBS, so I'm just waiting for people to... Okay. Is Super Meat Boy minus the gore? Yeah, it's just a 2D platform. I, I brought it, um, you know, I brought it. If people want to play, it's a pretty fun game. Um, you know, I was like, fucking... It's 2D platformer that I, I quite enjoy. Um, it's an okay audio level, sounds good for me. Uh, n a few people have it, like Nif Backwards has it, I don't know, like, he wants to play. Um, but I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't know if these opinions will probably change over time. So if that exists, and if they will change over time, then I might just have to clip it. There's a few people who say, like, you know, Tyrone, not to jerk you off or anything, but your streams are, you know, better than someone of your viewership and sub-level gets. Uh, because I actually put some form of effort into the streams that I watch. I don't want to waste people's I mean, I time. I said that back in the day. Yeah. I mean, like, um... But it's like, what the fuck does that mean, you know? Because it's like, yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't know, I try to be- I try to be something that I would actually want to watch. That's my- that's my goal. There's just so many live streamers that I just realistically think are pretty shit and I would never actually want to watch. So I just want to do a show that I would actually want to watch. Instead of just like, being disappointed with all these like shit live streamers, I just want to be the best version of live streamer to just entertain myself, really. More than anything. Um, if someone wants to quip my shit, or whatever, um, if it's funny, I'll fucking upload it. But as for doing it myself, if it's- unless it's just like a highlight reel, or people really want something, I don't know. I can see somebody clipping the rant you go on. Yeah, if people- I don't know. If- I don't know. If people want to quip my fucking streams, they can go ahead and clip whatever they fucking want, regardless of the context. They can edit in anything. They can do an alien voice of me saying like the worst things in the world. I do not give a shit as long as it's funny and on the internet. It's it's funny. Um, but I don't know if you catch the average zoomer's attention. I don't know. I think everything can gather a fan base. It's just if I want to even have a fan base, you know. I I just want to have a bunch of people that watch me from time to time. That's all. Um, I don't know. What I want to get out of the internet is vastly different from what a lot of other people see out of the internet, though. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like the last true version of a live stream that I would actually watch. Um, not to, like, you know, whatever. But who knows? Tyron has Tyron rants. I would never- The only reason that would ever exist is if someone else makes that for me. I'm not fucking do something called a Tyron rant channel. Um, isn't the Tyrone Rants channel just your stream half the time? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know. People don't come here for the drama. They come here for the fucking buff and drama. Um, I guess. I don't know. 
don't know. I want to play, but I can't run out. I suck at platformers. Um, it's true, but I, I doubt you catch it. You have resumed attention. I don't... Can someone say my best stream or the best thing I've done on this channel? What do you think the best thing I've done? I want to hear a bunch of people say this. Like, what's the thing that I've done that hasn't seemed like filler or whatever? Like, actual canon lore for birth controller. I want to hear, like, the best part of uh, my stream. Uh... Do, 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 do. The Peter Scully strips. Hell yeah, I suppose. Okay. Ugh. Okay. JK, I don't know. What the fuck? Okay. Tyrant. That's pretty good. Are there any updates on these, um, Sweet Baby Ink thing? Um, I mean, there's some updates. It's just, what, what do you mean by update? I, it's still progressing. I mean, Gamergate 2, fucking pronouns is, I don't know, everlasting. Um... I don't know. The Peter Scully streams? Oh, Mr. Feel hasn't seen them? Yeah, essentially, we did a stream where me, Spondo, um, a few others, I think even Unseen, um, watched a documentary on Peter Scully and made a bunch of jokes about it, and it was pretty funny. Um, I got Finn was a common member of your own wall, cow. Um, yeah, Finn Eastlaw's great. Um, I don't know. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. I okay. used to compare you to Howard Stern because you had like lol cows all the time on. Oh yeah, um, you you cannot rate the perfection. The most memorable stream is the old DQ streams with Tyrion messing with Pushman. Yeah, those those the DQ streams were great. Um, DQ eight stream that was fucking great. That, that highlight video is actually probably the most the most extensive editing I've done on a YouTube video. Editing up like fucking what eleven streams that are all like four hours long into like 40 minutes with like different edits and stuff like this on. That's probably the most editing I've done on a fucking YouTube video. <laughs> it took me like a fucking pain in the ass oh, to do, by the way. I can't, I can't get out. Yeah. <laughs> the pork for convo debate when people come in and you just shit on them. Yeah, I don't know. I need to have more people on, I guess. Because I used to do this thing where I just shit on people and debate people, but it would be debates about random stuff. And the pork frog debate would just be like, pork frog accidentally admitted that they were a flagger. And I'm just like completely rallying. Brandon yelling mom was funny as well. Yeah, that was great. Um, I don't know. I've got to clip more moments because what everyone references is the clips that I have. But I feel like there's a bunch of funny ones that no one talks about. Um, bunch of lively moments are funny. Um, okay. A nice one. I didn't even pay attention to that. Um. I'm like having like 10% tension right I think Frieza before, like, when Frieza fought against Vegeta in the fucking Namek saga, like, he's still in like 10%, like, less than a single percent form. Okay. I like, I usually like the non commentary drama stuff. Okay, sure. Um. There's a little something for everybody. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like it a little bit of everything. Um. Torrent's video editing software, it's a pirated version of Adobe Premiere, um, and I have to stress on the pirate, because I pirated- Do what you want, because I'm a pirate to see you are the pirate! Um, oh, 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 no, okay, Nice is gonna fucking beat me, oh, okay. <laughs> no, Nice, here we go! <laughs> Can't have Nice beat me, okay. I get uh, pretty competitive with almost forms of every single game. I get very competitive with a lot of things, and I, I just like to win. I, I feel a competitive aspect that I have to succeed in. Okay. Okay, there we go. I'm lost. I've lost. Fuck. Okay. Oh, uh, great. I messed that up. Okay. I have a brush sticking. Tyrants. Okay. When four of you came on stream, that was fun. The interaction between you and him was funny, especially during the Wind Waker streams. Yeah, Flavio, okay, I might have to talk to Flavio again. I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, I need to get more of like a bigger roster going on, of like people who would call him. Um, we used to have a spawn dial every stream, and now we have a uh, spawn dial now. Well, we had him last stream. Well, yeah, but the point is, it's not as frequent as before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I gotta get more casts. Um, is there any guys? 
stream in the commentary community you think I should go on? Because realistically, it's like, the reason Spawn Down came on is because I went on Spawn Down Live a bunch. I went on the Cucked Podcast a bunch as well. And it kind of gave me a bunch of people that would always come on. Um, you know. And now it doesn't really exist. So, I gotta find new people, I guess. To expand the existing. Expand the existing uh, The only one that I think would maybe be realistic for you is Larex's streams. Uh, uh, he shares. I think you could easily play his straight man, though. I do think so. Um, I I think I think works as ass, but I don't know. Maybe 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 we'll. Uh, never mind. No, for fuck's sake. Um, I don't know. I've never talked to him. But it'll be funny if, if I have a really poor interaction with them or something. I don't know, there's just not that many good stream- uh, well, good streamers. Emphasis on good. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's bottomless. Okay. You need a rotating door, people. I used to have that. Um, Even put on live dead. I went on Spawn Down Live a few days ago. It comes back when he wants to stream. Um, and Cucks Live is <laughs> meant to be doing something for good. I'd say go on Confusing Opinions. That doesn't count. I mean, Confusing's already in the lexicon. He already comes on, but he, he was already a rare guest to begin with. Confusing Opinion was a rare guest to begin with. He's been on like four or five times. He's a rare guest on the fucking... In the KTS fucking lexicon. Okay. I don't know. The last time my streams kind of stagnated in terms of viewership, I have an Illuminati moment and then I have 100 live viewers and kind of got a completely new grasp of people. So who knows if that will happen again now. Um... Because I, I won't, ultimately, I will never let this die, and it will always go on. So, it will always go on. The show must go on. Um, you know. But the, the easiest way to kill something is just zero activity. And streams never grow anything. Like, even Augie was doing streams for, like, half a year. Like, every single day, but he wasn't uploading any videos. So, his subscriber count was actually... Like, he had zero subscribers gained. Like, Augie. You know what? That's probably, that's probably the best way... For uh, for you to have a rotating door of people, because you always have an open door policy when it comes to to uh, uh, call-ins, so to speak. Yes. So if, you, if the channel were to grow, you would eventually have more of a rotating door of like new people just calling in. Yeah. I don't there's, know. There's, there's bound to be a bunch of people that are willing to talk to you. Sure. If you, if you grow. I gotta I gotta I gotta find some fucking cool guys. I don't know. Um. Does Tyrone's Bolding Gate stream? Hell yeah. We are bolding. Okay. Bolding Gate? Okay. Um, let's go forward for this. I don't know. Um, okay. You should have showed yourself more in Doc. He's like, I guess, but I don't. I don't know. Well, Doc doesn't really stream anymore, so you can't go on his streams anymore. He streams like once a month now. Does he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he streams like once a month now. Like, ever, ever so often. And not that good streams, but... If they exist. Turn you stream earlier so you can get the coolest... I've never heard Kiku's voice. I guess... You can call in if you want. I mean... You're up. Who would want- okay, one in the chat if you want Kiku to call in right now. Put the, put one in the chat if you want Kiku to call in right now. Yeah, I almost heard Kiku's voice. Oh, he stopped like a month ago? Oh. I thought he was like only going like once a month now. Never mind. I guess he stopped again. That sucks. Yeah. One! Okay, people- the people want to hear Kiku's voice. Oh! Okay, there we go. I'm sorry, what? I fucking, uh, fucking flamed you. BTFO. <laughs> I got short. I'm not allowed to make noises late. Just say, like, a few, just say, like, a sentence or whatever, then. Um. Okay, can you have the same time zone as me, which isn't even that fucking late? Okay. I don't know. I don't sleep, though. I'm like a nocturnal animal. Okay. Okay. So anything else occur this week, news? Honestly, I've been binging fucking like Pokemon fan games. I've been playing uh, Infinite Fusion, and honestly, you know something interesting about Infinite Fusion? 
Sure. What, what's it, interesting? It, there's a version of Infinite Fusion av available on the Pokemon Battle Simulator Showdown. And because, like, it's so chaotic there, there is no established meta. That's correct. Which, which makes me think it could theoretically be a fun uh, <laughs> a tournament. Sure, thing. okay. Because there's no meta, anyone can just bring out literally anything. Because there's nothing established. And one of the benefits to having the fusions is that not only can you change the typing of a Pokemon and what it would normally be, you also expand its move pool to that other Pokemon. So you can have build up like some ridiculous things. Like you can have like a, a, a essentially a Blissey with Baton Pass is what you could have. Some crazy shit like that. Oh, you can have like huge power slacking or some shit? Or was that like broken? Yeah, well, I don't, I, I don't know what the uh, the rules are in the battle simulator for that, but sure. like basically you can have like insane shit. Ooh, okay, I gotta, I gotta fucking destroy Nice. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fucking destroy you at Daisy. Okay, oh, wait, that's gonna get taken. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, yeah. Good one, buddy. Okay, okay, Nice. Okay, put a one on track if you think Nice is gonna win. I'll get Kiku in after I'm this. Making okay. retarded mistake okay. right now. Yes! The Buck Controller oh, wins! Kiku, what is up? Hey! Uh, so this is my terrible voice. I have a really annoying Danish accent. That is great. To be honest, I thought your voice was going to be like 10 times higher. <laughs> Why? I don't know. In my mind, I always pictured them having a high voice. Have you never heard a Dane voice before? I mean, I don't no. know. Hey, my voice yeah, is really high, already, so I'm glad you invited to it be higher. It's the first time somebody has told me my voice feels deep, I guess. No, his voice does- his, he sounds like, um, I don't know, he sounds like a- he, he almost sounds Dutch more than anything. I have a lot of Dutch people. Um, yeah. Yeah, he sounds more like Dutch than anything else. Uh, Icky Vicky says, get a blanket, there's too much echo. What the fuck? In race, I gotta go now. Oh, what the fuck, okay. Bonnet needs you? Okay. Okay, Kiku left, I guess. Kiku- the brief Kiku appearance. Okay, so that is the voice of someone who saw Pygo's ass, by the way. That's, uh, that's what they sound like. Um... <laughs> great. Ugh, that's fucking dreadful. You know, I- 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 I'm sure they're traumatized He sounds them. like Domino. Yeah, that's what Domino <laughs> sounds like when he's not putting on the fake deep voice. Um... Oh, hi guys, it's me, um... <laughs> okay. Yeah, anything else happened this week, Nice? Rare, rare Kiku appearance, yeah. Uh, mostly the Dark Viper stuff. I've been following. Sure, okay. Um, but anyone else that you you would want on my fucking I don't know you you a, a guest that is much welcomed that you think would suit the Bar Controller? I don't know. We it, it's just, there's just been a big stagnation of like new people coming into the to the space and it, i blame the fact that like augie's not around because he was very much community oriented his show was at least i don't know i try to have kts i was like trying to have a way for like more people to be integrated like, i was thinking of like a writing stream right where people write something and they pass they ha they have something else and they continue a story to have even the people in chat integrated right pretty clever idea right i don't fucking know but, um, I say that Augie's shit was community oriented, but it was never intentionally that way. It's just a lot of people gathered around his shit and they would talk no. to each other around his shit. I didn't mean to start a game. Um, oh. Community oriented, aka plagiarism. Uh, I mean, you know, unless some plagiarism, I guess. Um, I don't know. I try to. I don't, I don't know. I just. I just say stuff that's interesting. A uh, nice content, I'll take it. Um, I don't know if it's like uh, I don't know. Ivy four being like a fucking you know. It depends. It depends what, what kind of purpose it is. If it's stuff that can fit on and stuff. If it's if it's literally just like a gaggle of live streamers all just live streaming forever, then that would just be pretty shit. If it's just like oh look at um a nerdy John stream from yesterday. This is what the imagine of KTS right. It's not a short Nerdy John, but let's say, like, the main topic of a KTS was, like, a Nerdy John story. And it's like, let's check out Nerdy John's stream from yesterday, you know what I mean? Fuck, it's over. I actually can't go anywhere. Okay. Hey, that's not- that's like, the last thing I, I would want to do. Um, news commentary, 100% plagiarism. Uh, what happened to Hogan? Um... 
Hogan is a great guy, but he's kind of got to this point where he just doesn't really want to be active on the internet with his voice out there. Which is a shame, because he's great. Um, I gotta find more Hogans, though. Um. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, we'll do we'll do a few more matches of this. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, get PTFO. I should I should have prepared for that. Uh, oh. Okay, there we go. We go. Yes. Fucking God damn it. Okay, and after this game, I will do one last one, but with a specific rule set enabled. Okay. More dying. I don't know what the rule set is because I just unlocked it. Okay. Okay, let's go four through here. Oh, oh no. I mean, more dying. Maybe not for me. Okay. I go duck under here. Let's jump over. What happened to Hogan? Um, I don't know. Maybe I need to get. Maybe I need to get in contact with Flavio again or some shit. Yeah, um, Flavio, he, he, he I, I missed him. <laughs> he was pretty fucking cool to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Because my stream started with like a bunch of people always being on, um, even though I'd never really talked to many people. Um, I don't know. The the birth control with social arc has got to start again. I just got to got got to make my streams got to make KTS great again. I got to have like all types of streams because now it's just like only one kind of stream. Um, I don't know. I think these streams are still kind of good though. Oh 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 no! Oh! Uh, niece. Uh. Oh no! Come on, <laughs> come on, niece. No, I literally fucked it up. Oh, I fucked it up. I fucked it up so much. I fucked it up. I fucked it up so much. Time to just try to get the weirdest as people on stream. I'm trying to do that. Okay, what's going on in Russia? Oh, the fucking. Ah, uh, can we even talk about that on stream? Um. Oh no. <laughs> Come on! Battle of the Ages, me versus Nice. Okay. Ooh. Oh, we're getting to that point again. <laughs> oh, wait, I picked, clicked the wrong button. Alright, it's over. I fucked up. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes! Come on! It's actually over. Four I seconds go. to go. We fucking James won that shit. Like that Down Central do something for Abby. I gotta get that guy on. That's a good. That's a good idea. Ooh, okay. Ivy before the one that simped for Abby. No, I am talking about Go Go Gadget on wheels. Oh, um, that guy. Okay, we're gonna do roulette wheel and wait. We can, when we not do. Okay, sudden death and lethal spikes. Okay. And we're gonna do one more. Get me in this lobby. Oh. Um. Wait. 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 Wait, can I invite- wait, wait, can we go back to exit? And we're gonna go custom match. And we're gonna invite... Okay, we're gonna invite Nef. Uh, and we're gonna invite... Uh, t -t 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 uh Gabby Yay, punch out? Yeah, Gabby J is in fucking super punch out. The fucking Glastro equivalent. Okay. Sonic the Hedgehog meets Peter Scully. Hell yeah. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, um... I just don't promote my stuff. It, wh every time I was on Tommy C, I promoted myself zero times, for reference. I never- Tommy C doesn't even know I do live streaming. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, I just, I just, I'm allergic to promoting myself. Like, I don't know. I leave, I leave the, the promotion to you. Because <laughs> I figure, like, I don't know. You feel kind of weird about promoting, so, like, I don't know. I would feel kind of weird, like, promoting on your behalf. Like, you can do whatever you want. Okay, how about here's the thing. If someone promotes me on fucking my behalf, if someone truly wants... Um, if someone truly wants someone else on my uh, to watch my stream and they think it's a pretty good thing and they go like, Hey, this is a pretty good stream. Watch this. I don't care. Um, I just feel bad doing it personally because I'm a pussy, I guess. Hit Pogo on stream. You know what? I might do that. That's a good idea. I might be... I'm gonna actually ask for that. 
I'm gonna ask Pygo to be on stream. Um. Okay. We're gonna get Pygo on, you said? I'm going to try. I feel like Pygo is exactly what KTS needs. I don't think you want me in the call for that one. <laughs> That's why I always retweet your streams. Thank you. Uh, thank everyone who retweets my streams and everyone who's just here. There are so many people who are just like KTS loyalists who are just here all the time. That's like very you nice. Know, Assistant thing. Sailor always like retweets your shit. He never watches though. I don't think. On I'm gonna ask. I think he'd come on if you ask him. I think his maggot edit stuff has been pretty funny. He did a bunch of coverage of maggot the whore edits, and they were pretty funny. Um. Hey. Um. Okay. You know what? You know what? Get assistant sailor on. I think I want. I want to. I want to talk to assistant sailor. Okay. Let's get, <laughs> let's get assistant sailor on. You know, I, can't, I have to start everyone, like, courteously. I have to start everyone with an interview. At the same way, Unseen. Like, the first time we ever talked to Unseen was in the fucking interview. You know what I mean? And now we've kind yeah. of become, like, pretty good friends. And Unseen calls in pretty regularly now. It's just, like, he's in our college, and he's, like, off on college. So, like, I mean, I asked him to call in last time because it was, like, the rover stuff. But his, like, microphone's pretty shit. That's why he's not calling in that much now. But, um, I don't know. Um, like, same thing, sort of big, busy for Monkey Man as well. Monkey Man was a pretty good new addition. I think Monkey Man's great. Um, Fuck, I almost got the hat. But, you know, you can't just get non poofy won't poop on and just, like, uh, expect them to be like, oh, yeah, you know, these are going to be the new KTS guys. No, they're just, like, they're all part of the show. You like to leave it at people's discretion for them to come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Brandon... Even only Brandon, I only actually Brandon. asked Brandon, hey, can, are you ready for this? To call in twice. Every other time I streamed with Brandon, he just instinctively just was like, yeah, I'm ready to call in immediately because I had an open call policy. Um, that's a, that's hitting the wall, Brandon. Um, oh shit, I'm dead. I think I'm the only one then at that point that's like decided to be like a registered co-host then, huh? Yeah, I said, um, Brandon what the fuck was the co-host because it just worked for the stream. Um, there was also, um, well, there was someone who wanted to be a co-host as well, but I was like, I gotta be honest, you probably- I can't have you on the stream anymore. That's like a different thing entirely. That's a little bit of war no one will ever know. Uh, so I will refuse to elaborate now. I don't know. Also, um, whoever is watching my old streams, can you fucking say in chat? It's not embarrassing or anything. But I looked at my analytics and it's like, I know someone is going back and watching those old fucking streams. I don't know who the fuck it is though. And it's one guy. So. Was it Fat Cat? No, not Fat Cat one one. But we will have no guesses after this. Okay. I watch sometimes. Hell oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm literally gonna lose. Uh, okay. Um, instant death. Oh, yeah, instant death spikes are enabled. Okay. Oh, wait, there's nothing here for me. No, okay. I can't lose, come on, okay. Well, now I'm rooting for you, Tyrone, because if you win, then I get another chance. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it, Tyrone. You gave me another <laughs> chance to redeem myself. IVV4, okay. Um, redeem myself. But I've also given myself an extra chance to win. This is a discerning thing for me, because uh, I do not want to lose as well. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Okay. Fuck. It's all over. Okay. Me versus knife. I do not win anymore. You win. Both control with W. I don't know. How are you? Let's Wait. go. What do you think about that idea of trying to build, like, competitive teams with infinite fusion meta, so you can pretty much kind of craft whatever- That sounds want. pretty cool, but, uh, Nice. I'm going pretty... I don't- I've, oh, I don't know why I just did a Joe Biden speech, but I gotta go. Nice is the noticer who ain't fucking knowing, but the birth controller will always keep following. See you next time, guys. Peace out. See ya.